open the select board meeting for Tuesday, March 28th. It is 5.35 p.m. All right, I will order the, open the <laughs> finance committee meeting for March 28th at 5.35 p.m. I will open the capital improvement planning committee for March 28th at 5.34 p.m. <laughs> Just in time. <laughs> All right. Um, so now we've all called to order um, a couple quick comments. We had some question before. Frontier did vote the budget. They didn't vote it at the night that it was presented. It They voted it the next night, but they made no changes. Right. Um, and I've really, rechecked the numbers. Yep. Huh? I rechecked good. the numbers. They're all good. Okay. Um, Deerfield did vote the Deerfield Elementary School budget. Um, there we had some questions last time that came in um shelly answered those and i i hope i forwarded them to everybody on the finance committee that was my intent um hopefully that happened okay um so i think we're ready for minutes review is everybody um, so I sent a revision of the minutes like two hours ago or an hour and a half. Ago. Oh, I have not seen that. Um, correcting. Uh, I somehow gotten one of the numbers wrong. <clears throat> for the, um, oh, that's what, yes. Brenda spotted that. I'm not sure how I okay. got that wrong. Um, I think you just took, it was for the rec director, and I think you just took her regular salary instead of adding in her longevity pay. That was okay. all you were missing. That was probably it, yeah. Yep. Okay. So do we have a motion for these minutes? I move that we um, approve the minutes as revised. Do we have a second? second. Any discussion? Yeah, I did a nice job. No, um, we are all here in person, so we get to just vote. Um, okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. We're voting for the minutes. Right. Understanding. <laughs> okay. I, I left early. All right. Uh, so that was one, two, three, four, five. In favor, any against? Any abstaining? Same. All right, so that passes 501. Um, so we have a few budgets left to review. Um, and then we have one of those is library, and Candace will be coming later because they had another meeting um, going on. But I think what we should do since we have the capital committee here is start with capital recognizing that um, we still have a few other budgets to go through. Um, so Mark, do you want to present uh, the I capital do. Um, If you could just give me one moment here to of open course. the PDF. Oh, and then you can share it. Yes. That makes sense. I'm sorry, I don't have my watch. Wait, like one time. <laughs> Thanks. Is that my it's this, no, the I thing that was on song. your at the table? Okay, so uh, there should be a spreadsheet that oh, it kind of looks like this here um, that has our uh, capital plan. So uh, what the uh, Capital Improvements Planning Committee did was uh, reviewed um, requests from all the department heads for uh, capital. Um, this is for requests that uh, for, for capital improvements over $10,000 or for engineering or design fees, consulting fees associated with projects that cost over $10,000. So uh, in the course of doing this, uh, we typically meet with all the department heads, kind of get an understanding of why they want to spend, what they're spending, and then attempt to uh, assess the their financial needs and the financial health of the town to uh, come up with a list of priorities. So before we dive into the individual items, um, each of the priorities are, are basically broken down into numbers that map to uh, basically five levels. First, 
Priority ones are things that are going to be pre-approved or pre-funded projects. Uh, you'll find this on page three of the documents in front of you, by the way, this list. Number two is uh, safety and health. Number three are items that are of operational importance or to prevent uh, further damage. Um, number four are proactive priorities, meaning things that we want to get ahead of and not fall behind on. And then five are, are others. So the new items for this next fiscal year are highlighted in orange. And uh, what I'd like to do is kind of take everyone through department by department and just kind of uh, uh, outline what some of these items are and uh, provide um, any, any responses to questions that either the select board or finance committee has. So starting on page one, I'd like to draw your attention to the Deerfield Elementary School section. Here we have uh, two capital projects. One is uh, front en front entry repairs for the asphalt and sidewalk uh, or walkways uh, out in front. Um, this was brought to us uh, with a request for $80,000 and uh, the CIPC uh, voted to approve this and gave it a priority level of two, uh, which is that of uh, safety and health. The next item here was um, the air conditioning. Uh, this is phase two of a multi-year uh, project. Uh, this year's phase will be 45,000. And uh, this is a, a pre-approved or pre-funded project, uh, hence why it has priority one. Uh, for the next section here, uh, we have the Frontier Regional School requests. Um, this is the tennis courts replacement uh, of $48,693. Um, the Capital Improvement Planning Committee uh, voted to recommend this as well. This is kind of like a safety and health concern. Uh, so for that reason, we, we gave it priority level two. Um, this one here, you know, it's it's not the committee's responsibility necessarily to try and identify funds for these things, but if we know of um, ways that these could potentially be funded, uh, we try to indicate that as well. So for this one, um, all of the towns uh, have uh, sought CPA funds, and um, we thought that it would be prudent for us to do that as well. So it could potentially be funded out of CPA uh, monies. So can we talk about that for a sec? Sure. Yeah. Um, so it didn't go to, this is my understanding, mm -hmm. that sure. it didn't go to the CPA committee in time for the usual CPA process, but we've reached out to them and asked them to consider it. That's correct. Anyway, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Capital has not, but you know, we encouraged the uh, Frontier Regional School to reach out to the CPC to uh, see if we could at least get that reviewed. Okay. Uh, voted to ask. Oh, so if we all well. go and beg. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was yeah. hoping maybe too yeah. that the finance committee could also kind of write a letter just saying, like, you've got CPA, finance, and select board all asking it's vital to get this done. We, you know, otherwise we have to raise money. I don't know where we're going to get the funds to do it otherwise. What happens the other as Mark alluded to the other three communities in the district have it as the CPC expenditure? So we it doesn't. If they pass, all three pass, and we don't have it as a CPC. I'm not sure if that messes it up, but we're still on the hook for the 48,000, our share. Right. And it would have to be the yeah. raising because it's not kind of a lot of money. And we, you know, the money is already sitting there. So why would we raise additional money when there's money there? I completely agree. Mm -hmm. um, do we want to, do you guys want to vote now as a finance committee to reach out to CPA? Um, or do we want to go through more of the discussion before we make that decision? Don? Um, as a dual well, it's talking about it, I guess. That's kind of what I think. Yeah, so we don't forget. <laughs> okay. Um, do you want a motion? Yeah. <laughs> Um, make a motion that the finance committee write a letter to the CPA committee asking for $48,693.38 to replace the tennis courts. We have a second. Second. All right. Any discussion? Does anybody know, are they planning to talk about this tomorrow night? They have a meeting tomorrow night, right? Uh, they are I'm planning to do hoping. it. Um, I assume I'll be the one that would write that email. So <laughs> I guess I'm volunteering to do that. 
Oh. Unless Jim wants to. Um, okay, but I, I do need to know what is the actual name of the committee? <laughs> Uh, it's the Community Preservation, Preservation Act. Act. The Community, Community Preservation, Preservation Act. Commission. Community Preservation okay. Commission. Okay. Thank you. Yep. See, everybody is yeah, using yeah, a different name. Yeah. Right. It's a community. It's Community Preservation Committee, not Commission. Oh, the it is. is. Okay. CPA. So yeah. CPA fund. Here, Casey. By the oh. Okay. It is a little. <laughs> Casey. Sorry, I, I try not to interrupt, but. Thank you. Yeah. Go ahead, Casey. Oh, she corrected. No, I just was trying to clarify between commission and committee, and I don't usually interrupt, but I'm I have not to. Oh, so it's it, it is committee. Yeah, it is committee. Okay. Committee. And I, I believe they're meeting uh, on the 29th at six fifteen. Yes, that's my understanding. It was a little bit of an oversight on our behalf and the school. We just didn't know who was supposed to put it in. I think it got overlooked and. So we're, we're, I know it's outside the norm for CPC uh, to do this, but well, we, we, they, we've been told it's outside the norm and they wouldn't look at it. So I'm, I'm begging them to really reconsider it. It's really in the best interest of the town. So. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I'm not convinced it is the school's responsibility. The school comes to us and asks us to fix the tennis courts, and then we decide whether how we want to pay for it, whether it's um, raising appropriate or CPC or something like that. I don't, I don't, yeah, so it doesn't really matter, but um, Casey has her hand up. Oh, go ahead, Casey. I just want to say one thing, two things actually. Um, we need people to speak into the mic because we can't hear. Okay. Um, and the other thing is, is CPC has addressed late applications before. Most of the time I've seen land applications, but they've done it. It's not unprecedented. Right. Hopefully we can make that case okay. tomorrow. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Um, can we make the speaker a little bit louder yes. anyway? I'm, I'm kind of deaf. I'm sorry. No, she's quiet. It was fine. Oh, and the fact that it's well, if you turn it that way, though, will it scream at us when we? Go? Is it? It's okay. Oh, it's not screaming at us. Good. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, any further discussion on the motion? Okay. All those in favor? That's unanimous. Six zero zero. All right. Thank you. Continue on. All right, so uh, the next thing that we reviewed was uh, the building and inspections permitting software. Um, we uh, went back and forth on this a little bit. Uh, I think this this was initially higher, um, but uh, th this this came through um, with a capital request. So the capital request is for the kind of like the one-time cost of the software. So the implementation and, and things like that, this does not include the subscription, um, the ongoing subscription. Uh, so. Uh, this was things like the implementation, I believe a few iPads, um, and uh, let me see here. I'm just going to pull it up quickly. Yeah, uh, it was a few tablets um, and the implementation and then the um, different modules that go along with it. So the total for this was $37,880 and the Capital Improvement Planning Committee uh, felt as though this would be of priority three, which is of operational importance and um, I'm not really preventing further damage, but uh, that's the category that it falls into. The big reason why, uh, you know, we we talked about this was because one, um, there's uh, just an absurd amount of manual work that goes into um, archiving and, and also, you know, pulling up uh, permits. And then also um, with our personnel uh, tenure being as long as it is, there's a risk of um, you know, us not being able to recall information as quickly as we are if there's turnover in that department from mm -hmm. folks retiring. Oh, I thought you were saying we were getting old and couldn't remember anything anymore. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, yeah, there's kind of a euphemism for that, yeah. I got <laughs> Trying to put it politely, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Jim. Um, could you clarify, um, you mentioned cost of tablets, but the, the line is just software, so it's actually software and Electronics, the software and uh, the tablets that are required to use said software. Okay. Right. Um, the, the, 
the tablet yeah out in the field the tablets uh are six hundred dollars a piece so it's it's really you know marginal compared to the, the software implementation costs themselves the, itself so this having this software would allow people to go online to request um permits yeah so this is that would, part of it this would handle um the building permits uh complaints modules there's some board of health uh, modules in here uh, as well and then in future years we did not recommend this uh just yet oh i'm sorry did i misspeak about well, we took out the board of health oh that's right okay oh okay all right so covered under the grant okay oh right that, uh okay yeah so we we, we went back and forth on this several times um <laughs> But uh, yeah, th there's also the ability to extend this further in later fiscal years uh, to include um, more modules should we, uh, um, you know, like the software and want to uh, expand its use. It, it pays for the pay online module too. Beautiful. Which is, yeah, that's and great. you can apply it and then you can pay them. Those are separate models, uh, modules. But that the pay online is included. Good. Yeah. Good. Yep. Great. Anything to reduce labor. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, the current system we have is really archaic. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Um, any other questions on that before we move on to public works? No, okay. It, it says oh. ARPA question mark, is that? Ah, yes, uh, so we discussed um, potentially funding this um, out of uh, ARPA funds, I believe, yes. I think, I think we're pretty much on board with that too. We know how vital okay. it is to, for productivity and all. Okay. All right. Um, and then the next item that we have here, uh, our next set of items is for Public Works. So Public Works has uh, three uh, requests on this page and then a, a fourth one on the next page. Um, so starting with the, uh, the, the first one on the list here, there's a uh, Ford F-350. Um, well, actually, before I go into this, I should say that the highway department has, I, I believe it's a 30 year schedule of capital replacements. So um, we have some items that are on here that we've deferred in previous years, and it's starting to kind of stack up. So we met with Kevin to talk about uh, the operational importance of some of these and, and had him kind of relay his priorities to us. Um, but uh, also, um, you know, one thing, uh, another thing of note is that you know, should should we fall behind, we're going to have to figure out how to pay this down in, in future years. It's going to be more expensive to fund the capital requests the, the more we uh, defer it. So um, there's also going to be some issues with some of the individual items, and, and we'll go into that more for each one. But uh, yeah, the, the first one on the list here is a, a Ford F-350. So this is a, a 2014 uh, replacement. This was for $70,975. Um, so this one is going to, um, on Kevin's list, for our priority, we were reading this as a priority three, but on Kevin's list, I believe this was kind of the number four priority for him. That's what he told us the other night. Yeah. Um, the next item that we have here is the uh, the Freightliner truck. Question. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. The you suggesting and recommending to come from capital stabilization. Yes. Why? What was your thinking of using that and, and not opera? If we can use opera, I don't know what the rules are. But do you know? Do you um, remember? The, I I don't. It's, sorry. Did you want to answer okay. that one, Casey? I just had a thought. Um, so not everything can go through ARPA. John, we don't have that much money. And the board does have some priorities that they had already identified, including, including the Leary lot, which may cost more than $500,000. So the reason we talked about certain things coming out of ARPA and certain things not coming out of ARPA was um, to really give the select board some leeway to deal with that, those the ARPA funds themselves but also preserve some of them because we may need them for the projects that have been approved. Thank you. So uh, one possible source, uh, as you've identified, would be uh, capital stabilization for this. Uh, the next thing that we have is the um, 
the, the Freightliner truck, the 2004 replacement. Um, this is going to uh, cost us 325,000. Um, we conditionally approved this just to kind of get in line um, in, in 2022. Uh, so since this was kind of you know pre-approved, we gave this a priority one. Uh, I believe with this machine, this is the one I think is is going to jump up significantly in price. Mm. Uh, and there are um, other um, customers that are chomping at the bit to to get this one. So um, you know we'll we'll have to get back in line again at a much higher cost. So this one is a uh, capital request that we believe could possibly be funded by ARPA funds. And we felt it was a really large ticket, and um, it would. By doing this, it would help us to utilize other funding for a lot of things, but it, we we hate to lose it and pay eighty thousand or sixty thousand next year or get in line again. Um, and we thought, as much as we don't want to use ARPA for these kind of capital things every year, we felt we felt it was a significant chunk of money that could free up funds to do other things on the capital would still leave us some money to do the main projects that we wanted to. Um, but it is, it's it's eating up a lot of that, but we do feel it's important to um, not lose that that protected price. And and I think the other the other uh, push for using ARPA for this and the permitting software and another thing on the next page is the fact that we can do it right now. I believe mm -hmm. the truck is ready. They're just waiting for us to say go. And so we can do that with ARPA. We could spend it right now if we wanted to. So it, 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 we don't have to wait for town meeting. We don't have to wait for the end of the year. We can we can take care of it. I, I think also just to comment on that, the meetings that I've been to, there is a concern that the federal government might claw back the money um, come at the end of their fiscal year. So we're hoping to have the money that's left in ARPA committed to the Leary lot. And if we spend some of this money um, remaining on a couple of things like the truck that we could, you know, get delivery at pretty soon, then we, we're not at risk for our money. Yeah. Um, so, so could could somebody clarify uh, when this said that this request was the straight liner was conditionally approved? I don't remember. Was that uh, by town meeting or by the capital uh, committee? Capital last year. Okay. Capital so and the select. Still have to go to the town. Mm -hmm. Right. Correct. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, in terms of uh, Kevin's priorities, this was uh, priority number one. Um, moving on to the uh, John Deere loader. Um, this this was a uh, request that came in for uh, two hundred fifty five thousand. Uh, we gave this uh, priority three in terms of. Um, Kevin's uh, priorities. This is number three on his list. Um, this uh, vehicle here needs about forty to fifty thousand dollars worth of repairs. Um, so, uh, and I believe this has been uh, deferred twice now. Mm. So, if we uh, if we do defer this one, um, regrettably, I think it would be the third time, and then we'll 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 definitely be on the hook for forty to fifty thousand dollars worth of repairs. Thanks, you guys. Um, Go ahead, Casey. Oh, I just second. wanted, I went back and I looked at the old capital plans that I had, which is about three years worth of capital plans. There may be a clerical mistake in the, the reference to 2004, but Kevin isn't here for me to, to ask the question. That's an aside, but it has been, it has been um, kicked down the road a couple of times and the increase in price went from an estimated 180,000 to 255 because we waited so long to do it. I just wanted I went back and looked just so I could be clear about it. Yep. Okay. Uh and then for the final request, um this one is uh the standard dump body replacement. Uh this is for uh, fifty-five thousand dollars. This is this is actually a really really high priority. Uh, this is very uh, unsafe. Um, this is number two on on Kevin's priorities. Uh, this is the the sander body that kind of rattles around when um, it's it's not full. So a, as this is in use, you know it's it's definitely um, a, a potential safety hazard, especially as 
the load uh, starts to lighten up on it. This is another one that we thought um, could potentially be funded uh, out of ARPA funds. Any questions on the Sander dump body? Okay. Uh, so moving on to SCEMS, um, we had a, a couple things here. Um, first is the uh, the ambulance for 375,000. Um, what we uh, did is we, we uh, did recommend this as well um, and, and assign this kind of like a, a priority too. Um, we uh, may have to wait until there's more retained earnings for this one. Um, as the uh, the town share, I believe, was one hundred and forty three thousand out of that uh, three hundred seventy five. See if I can pull it up. One hundred forty two thousand three forty three. So, yeah, close. So, can you? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, just a a simple question. Um, so for the the school tennis courts, the amount you were quoting was Deerfield share, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Whereas this is the this, the ambulance is the full amount. Oh, okay, yeah. Right. So we're the fiscal well, agent. Yeah, we're the fiscal agent, so it would would have to be the full amount that that we're responsible for. That's what we would have to either borrow for or. But some of the money would come out of scam. Some of it would come from retained earnings, a small amount, hundred thousand, and the rest would come from each of the communities, which makes it kind of messy. Um, um, just um, are they have they approved this? We approved it, but we're applying for a grant. This is second to our okay. cardiac monitors. Well, I just I think you're asking, did the towns did the approve? other yeah. towns? Because I'm just concerned oh. that if we you know approve this and they don't. <laughs> well, since we're the fiscal agent, we're kind of in control of it. Yeah. Only they have to approve this. I thought we're not. Um, yeah. Well, all right. No, yeah, it's just not it's on here, I think. For I just don't want to, I just want to make sure that Deerfield doesn't wind up on the hook for the whole thing if Waitley so, decides to cheap out, yeah. which is awesome. fiscal agent. But we would bill Waitley and Sunderland for their share mm -hmm. when I had to purchase it. Mm -hmm. But we're, we're hoping to get a grant by the you know in the fall cycle. I think this was one of those approved to get in line things, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, you said it would be two weeks. So just to have a process discussion for a minute, um, CIPC has reviewed all of these. I, I'm saying this to make sure I understand. Yeah. Um, CIPC has reviewed all of these, and these are the projects that you are recommending as viable capital projects that you think need doing. Yes. And then. Um, Right now, we're just listening to your presentation and asking questions so that we understand it. Um, the ones that are ARPA funds, like we don't really have any say in it, that select board controls the ARPA mm -hmm. funding. So that's for our information. The other ones where we end up paying for it out of either capital stabilization or CPA or whatever, we will vote on those as we discuss those budgets, not right now. So right now yep. we're just sort of understanding everything that you're telling us, but we're not actually voting anything right now. Right, yeah, you're just getting the presentation because there's a couple components here. The select board is gonna have to approve these going on um, as warrant articles. We're gonna have to right. find as a finance committee, kind of feel like I'm switching hats a little bit. Yep. Um, we're gonna have to find funding sources for some of these. Right. And then other committees are going to have to approve funding sources for the case of like CPC and, you know, select board for ARPA, things like that. So um, I think that's my understanding anyways of the, the genesis of this meeting being a joint meeting with the select yeah. board and the finance committee. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Have, so the three set, go ahead. Oh, well, <laughs> well, I was just wondering, so in the request category that we're going through right now, it looks like everything that was requested, pretty much aside from the ambulance, was approved. Or, or is that not? Well, so kind of. It's not showing us what was. Yeah, we, we punted some things. Okay, to, and they're just not to, being shown. Correct. Us. Yeah. Ah, perfect. Yeah. Okay. I know in, 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 in other years, we, we didn't approve some things. Yeah. Um, in, in this year, we, we, uh, we pushed some, some, of, some of these things off to uh, 25 and, uh, and beyond, FY25 and beyond. Yeah. Good question, though. 
So for the 375 for the ambulance, um, are you recommending that, like, do you think this is going to go on this town meeting or are we going to wait until later and have some? I don't okay. think it's going to go on this one. Yeah. All right. If, if we did and we approved everything else the way this is laid out, we wouldn't have enough money in capital stabilization for the ambulance. So we would have to find another funding source. <clears throat> okay. Thanks. Well, uh, the next thing that we had uh, was the IV medication pumps um, that uh, did not meet the threshold of the capital improvement committee. So it has been struck. Um, the next one is the cardiac monitor replacements. So um, these are the, the machines that uh, are aging that we need to replace. Um, and that those are um, going to cost 150000 And we gave that a priority level two. And um, that, I believe, is, um, yeah, our suggestion would be retained earnings for that. Okay. This, if there was any questions, I can answer on the cardiac monitor why we um, ordered those versus the ambulance. I think we talked about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. They don't they don't make them anymore. They don't make them anymore, and there's a 14 month waiting list. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh moving on to the next uh request here is a senior uh housing site feasibility study. Uh so um this request is um in kind of the pre-approved category, this came in at 85,860 and uh, we're looking um, to potentially fund this with CPA funds or, or recommending that they be funded with CPA funds. Do you have a question? Who will do the feasibility study? Um, we have an engineer already on board, um, Berkshire Design, and they have already started the process. So. Where where are they looking? Can you, do they oh, do they know well, yet? Maybe they're working on the campus. Here. Oh, the whole campus. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. There was uh, just not enough money to finish, like the um, wetlands layout and borings for the heating system stuff like that. And then I guess uh, for completeness and. Also, for obvious reasons, we did not uh, vote to fund the capital stabilization fund this year. That takes us through all of the uh, requests. Um, funding totals are one million five hundred twenty-eight thousand four hundred eight dollars and thirty-eight cents, potentially coming from different funding sources. So, uh, the finance committees and select board, uh, or finance committee and select board, will, like I said before, probably have to find money for some of these things, but those are our capital recommendations. Just curious, Mark, when um, I was in, maybe I missed it, but was, was there any discussion about um, the resale value of what was needed? Or is it just assumed that there is none? I, or are they just gonna keep them and run them? I did just text Kevin about the loader itself, because the new loader will go to the garage the loader at the garage will go to the transfer station and replace the one at the transfer station. He has guys coming to look at it, you know, to bid, see what he could get for it. But I don't have a figure yet. Yeah. So I don't know about the other trucks. Yeah. To, to that end, he recycles all of his equipment. So it it's not necessarily going to be phased out. It's just going to go to phase two, if you will. So it'll, it'll serve once it's done serving its primary purpose. If, in the case of the loader, that's that's one that I can't answer because it needs forty to fifty thousand dollars worth of repairs. But some of those older trucks will go to the transfer station or or elsewhere. But good question. So on the spreadsheet, Kevin has this plan, but I don't see his requests for 25 26 27 on the form yeah so i suppose we could put those on here um we actually just keep deferring them so um 
if if the finance committee or anyone else wants to see um, some of those, we I guess we could start putting some more of the items in. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I do have um, I do actually have a copy of the thirty year plan that I could I could update this with. Maybe just the next four years worth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because then we could see like what's coming down the pipe as far as. You know, it looks like already next year without anything from Kevin, any of his equipment, we're at 1.7 million. Yeah, and there are some years where the equipment is the equipment purchases are going to be more expensive than others. So yeah. it's I think important for us. Um, so I, I'll definitely take your your recommendation and update this because I think that we're going to. Be in a position where we're going to have to start funding capital stabilization for those years that we're going to have very large amounts Absolutely. of purchases so that way we can dip into it to smooth out the, the curve right and i think the same question for the schools they seem very organized and seem to have a plan but i don't see what they like the mm -hmm. there's more hvac right coming or I think they want to do more of those mini splits for sure for the elementary down the road. Yeah, yeah we should have, have them do that. Here. Yep. Yeah, we should flush that out. Okay. For yeah, we did we did. We purchased quite a bit of that. Um so that may I think they purchased it last year. Is that, where is that? Deer? Are you talking about for Frontier for uh, Deerfield? Deerfield. So yeah, we yeah we we already did the uh, the dishwasher and some of the kitchen equipment. And I think and there's a walk-in cooler. I think somewhere uh, that's at Frontier. That yeah. was at Frontier yeah. last year. I think. Yeah. But yeah, we could ask check with Darius about that. I think they did fund some other stuff that may have been in that 120. No, that was, that was, that was, that was, yeah. Because that's what otherwise it's going to serve like the kitchen. All right. Any other questions on the capital plan? All right. Thank you, everyone. All right. So what budgets do we have left to vote? So you're not going to vote anything I, I think on that? So um, do, we won't vote. And what, what will we vote? They presented their results and we asked our questions until we get to the approving the individual warrant line items. That's, that's I think, when we would vote each of those. Okay. Um, we can, I don't know. Does anybody feel like we need a motion for saying thank you for presenting? <laughs> we are absolutely. Mark has really, really appreciate all the work that CIBC has. Oh, thank you all. Yeah. Process question, if I may. Sure. Is there, sorry. Oh, is it for me or? More Brenda than all of us. Is there a running total somewhere? Of, of what's going on. For this, which, this is what the running total is. This this report, other than you have a copy too. Well, we got one kind of no, no, there's one right here. Yeah. This is a new one every week. Right? Every week? Yeah. Did you I give you a new one, one every week. <laughs> it does not <laughs> it does not include any of the capital at this did, point. Did you pick up all of these things? Okay. Yeah. Some of them. <laughs> 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 Is there for the end of the meeting? <laughs> oh, I think I, I handed some to you. Uh, I don't think I handed you any of those. I think you just got it. Now. Yeah. Yeah. Can you hand me that? Yeah. Um. So we have town clerk salaries. Um. I think the select board wanted us to reconsider the select board staff salaries, but I thought we were going to wait with that a little bit yet. Um, we have Deerfield Elementary School. 
we have the library, which will happen at seven tonight. And then we have the debt, which I now have um, uh, information to complete, which I, which I gave you copies of tonight. And then we have the reserve fund and we need to revote the uh, South County EMS budget. All right. Plus I threw something in here for snow and ice because it's too much, too much to try to cover with either the reserve fund or other budgets. I just threw in what I thought was doable without completely running out of free cash. So, so what are we doing? Let's start with Deerfield Elementary. Okay. Three hundred fifty four hundred. <clears throat> Do they have that? All right, so for 350, 400, we started to talk about this last week and we had a bunch of questions. Um, so I did email um, the elementary school administration um, and they came back, and I think I forwarded that reply to you all. Um, one of the questions was, I'm not sure I sent this one. One of the questions was the two classrooms that we are um, dropping, would that be just through attrition or would it actually have to let somebody go? They said one, did, did I forward this to you? They said one of the positions would definitely be attrition. The second position they hope will be attrition, but it may not. So there may actually be in a position where they have to let somebody go. The other question we had was the IAs um, and why when we were reducing two classrooms, um, were we not reducing the number of IAs? And the response there was that um, there are right now they do not have enough IE, IAs where they have one per classroom. There are some grades that are sharing IAs between classrooms. So this would enable them to get closer to that one per classroom thing. And then the other piece of it is that many of the IAs are not actually classroom people. They're they're one on one with a student. Um, and that um even though they're one-on-one -on -one in the student that gives you another adult in the room that provides assistance to the full classroom um, for whatever that's worth. Um, the third question we have was had was the um, the reserve fund, what do you call that? School choice. School, school choice, choice fund. Yeah. Um, and why that school choice was building up. And that's what I forwarded with a, the lo sort of long explanation. My takeaway from the explanation and looking on the spreadsheet was that they do intend to spend that down, um, at, but sort of gradually over several years. And then she thought that this year specifically, they would be about 200 plus, 200,000 plus um, coming out of that fund. So um, that was the feedback on the questions that we had. Um, I just had one question. When we get that rural aid money, where does does that go to the schools and how do they account? I mean, what account does that go into? It's in a revolving fund that the school controls. Okay, yeah. so that's it's kept separate. Mm -hmm. It is. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So do we have a motion for this item? Anybody? I'll make a motion to recommend the Deerfield Elementary School account number 300-5400 in the amount of $5,265,247. We have a second. A second. Okay, now we're open for discussion. <laughs> Anybody? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> We all kind of went through the their detailed budget already. Yep, we did. Nothing, no salami to slice. All right, hearing no discussion. Has been moved and seconded for Deerfield Elementary School at five million two hundred sixty-five thousand two hundred forty-seven. Any discussion? All those in favor. That's unanimous six zero zero. 
Um, I make a motion that the select board approve five million two hundred sixty-five thousand two hundred forty-seven dollars for the Deerfield Elementary School. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye, Carolyn. Aye, Trevor. All right. Um, this is education. Public works is done. Want to do debt? Yeah, let's do debt. 700. In the 700 series. So we could start with maturing debt at 710-5900. These are ones that we handed out tonight. Yeah. There's one here to I pile them on top of each other. Okay. Everybody have it? Yep. Is select board voted this yet? No. No. Oh no, no. no. I, I just printed it tonight. So this okay. is the first time everybody's seen it. <laughs> so do you want to get a motion before we talk about it or? Oh, sure. Anybody like to move this one? Yep. I'll yep. make a motion to approve maturity debt. Count 710-5900. No. 422,051. Maturity debt. Got it. Okay. Do the second? Second. All right. Okay. So um, the garage is what it is. We have a principal pay down every year of 245000 so this is this is the maturing debt. This is just principal. And then on the DES roof, we just um, got bids today on that last thirty-eight thousand dollars, which will pay off in the fall next year. Um, so then, uh, when it comes to the wastewater treatment plant, um, we're working with USDA to close on the first loan, the eight million five hundred and sixty-nine thousand. That will hopefully be complete by the middle of May. What that leaves is um, the number off to the right isn't right, the 12781 It's actually 9781000 that we would be left to borrow. And I, what we talked about um, when we were looking at the wastewater treatment plant debt was paying off a certain, paying down a certain portion of what the town is responsible for, which is this 100,000 that I just plugged in. So you'll see that there's um, 300,000 plugged in on the wastewater treatment plant debt side when we get to that. Then the $8,569,000 bond is with USDA. These are the numbers that I just got from them at what was it, 4 o'clock, 3.30 yep. today. Um, I, I really commend them on getting us an amortization schedule. I'm so excited. Yep. So this would be um, the, the town's 25% of the principal portion that will be due in May of 2024. So really the only number on this page that is flexible that we could change is the uh, the hundred thousand dollar number? Like I said, I just I threw in an amount so that we could we could um, get it out there. I I chose this number because it brings up our tax levy. When you when you look at the tax levy sheet, it's a little bit higher interest than what we've paid in in let's say last year, or or I should say the debt is a little higher because it includes the capital for FRS, it includes the capital for um, Franklin Tech, but it's 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 a, a reasonable number as far as I was I was concerned as compared to last year. It's still in the $600,000 range with all of the debt we have. Of these, are these all excluded? These are all debt excluded, correct. Um, the plan with the USDA is 
We close on this loan first. We get that done before the end of the year. Hopefully shortly after the end of the year, we will be closing on the $2.9 million loan. And then they're going to start reimbursing us grant money every month thereafter. So we are taking out um, that next ban in June, and it's going to be due in December. So that by December, we should know more what we have going on. We should have been reimbursed for most of the grant. If not all, we should be reimbursed for, or we should have the bond set with USDA and we'll have a clearer picture. So then we can borrow for another six months to get us to June of 2024, which I hope is yeah. is the completion of our project and we can actually bond for it. But if it isn't, then we would ban again for a short period of time in order to get that complete. Does it look like we're gonna get that? That would increase the cost, obviously, to have to go to the What's that? Does it, do you, does it look like Trevor that we're going to finish on time? It, it uh, yes, I, I yeah. especially the second phase because there's not. I mean, there's not. There's some electrical, but really it's the electrical that slowed us up, and we're waiting on, you know, the kind of the switching for for the main plant. Um, that is what we've been waiting on, but it hasn't really messed up anything because we we moved on with phase right. two to kind of do the aeration tank. So that work is going to happen throughout next year. Um, and then finishing up all the kind of incidentals that we want to use with the grant money to try and burn up the grant money. So, um, you know, they'll be redoing the roof on the main unit, all the paving, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, um, which I need to kind of update the select board on it at another meeting, but uh, when Tim's back. So I believe it will be. Yeah, I don't think that we're into any trouble finishing up where we where we hope to be. So if we look at the levy tax levy count sheet that you gave us, that's what you were referring to, that you put that 100,000 right to make that sort of a smooth correct trajectory. Yes. So our tax rate is going to increase if if our new growth is what it is, what, what I've plugged in is going to increase 4.07%. That's pretty comparable with the previous years um, mm -hmm. on an average. We didn't hear back from the assessors on an estimate on that, though. I, I was hoping to hear back from them. Because um, it includes also... I think it may include all these paints. Frontier yeah. and... Um, okay. all right. All right. The, the so debt exclusion that on there is 662,000. Yeah, it includes, includes all these. Oh, got it. Yep. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, you'll see in the, on the bottom part of that tax levy sheet, you'll see Frontier Regionals. Oh, okay. Frontier Regionals Capital. You'll see the garage, um, the school roof, and then um, both numbers for the wastewater treatment plant. One is is the um, ban borrowing, and the other one is the USDA loan. Oh, it's the maturing debt and the interest together. Got it. Yes. Okay. Yes, <laughs> correct. All right. Yeah, that was off to the other side. I did not print that part of it. Yeah. Any further discussion? Question? It has been moved and seconded for maturing debt at 422,051. All those in favor? That's unanimous six zero zero. I make a motion for four hundred and twenty two thousand fifty one dollars for maturing debt. I'll second that motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> okay, so the next one is seven fifty one dash fifty nine hundred, and that's the interest on maturing debt. We have a motion. I move that the committee approve that the committee recommend uh, the sum of two hundred thirty-four thousand nine hundred forty-one for interest on maturing debt. Second. 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 
So the interest on the garage is what it is, can't change. Uh, the DES roof, um, this was the bid that we got today for a six month loan. We'll pay it off in six months. Okay. Then on the ban, um, our financial advisor recommended that I figure a 4%, which would be the net of the premium. Um, I figured a year's worth of interest in case we do the six month and then do the second six month to be done in June. Mm -hmm. Just to be safe, it's probably a little higher than it's going to be, but um, I figured that was that was better to be conservative on yeah, that end and have sure. enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the fall, we'll know better. And so when, when we get around to doing the tax rate, well, we have to know exactly what we're gonna be paying. Hopefully we'll know be, by the time we have the tax rate set. And then, um, on the bond with USDA, that very last line item, that is the 25% in, in both of these cases, 25% of the entire debt picture for the wastewater treatment plant, but that is for the bond. Our payments on the bond are going to be over 37 years, and that's the bond payment is 336848 on an annual basis. Oh, okay. good, you printed them. Yeah. Yep. Can I just ask why it's 37 and not 40? Because MG, <laughs> Mass, USB, Mass General Laws General Law. um, has something to do with Mass General Laws, and they've offered a 40 year bond, but you have, to they ha you have to subtract the years that you were borrowing your ahead of time. Your interim borrowing. Your interim borrowing. So that's the three years oh, that we yeah. had to take off. <laughs> You know what? It's okay. It's they don't tell you that. Okay? No, they no, don't. No, I'm sure it was in the 975 pages of the yeah. LOC, but yeah, I I didn't get that out of the that. LOC. But I'm not. A, I'm not a lawyer. Uh, okay. <laughs> so so on the 2.9 million dollar loan yep. that they're going to give us in the fall, it's going to be a 38 year. Yep. No, that that borrowing is going to outlast all of us, but. Well, <laughs> some, of, some. Any other questions or discussion? Yeah. Not paid. All right. It's been moved and seconded for interest on maturing debt at two hundred thirty-four thousand nine hundred forty-one. All those in favor? That's unanimous. Six zero zero. I make a motion to. Uh, for two hundred thirty-four thousand nine hundred forty-one dollars for interest on the current debt. I'll second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye, Carolyn. Chairman McDaniel, aye. Okay. Then the next one is interest on temporary loans, and that's seven fifty-two dash fifty-nine hundred. We have a motion. I recommend the finance committee, um, or I, I recommend, I move the finance committee recommend um, 752 5900 interest on temporary loans for $5,000. Second. So this covers things like if we um, run out of money before the tax rate is set and we need to borrow, um, it covers any peer reviews that we've done and we need to return money back to the applicant, we have to pay it with interest. Um, the 4,000 that you see in there for 2022 was the interest that we had to pay to Yankee Candle when we, um, when we were forced into the abatement on their property, um, just things like that. So that's what this $5,000 covers. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous six zero zero. I make a motion to approve five thousand dollars for interest on temporary loans. Second that motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor? I Carol. I Trevor McDaniel. Thank you. Okay. So I handed out a new debt picture for the wastewater treatment plant and a new summary sheet for the wastewater treatment plant. Since we were talking about debt, do you want to do that next? Sure. Okay. So we might as well go right to the debt, yep. wherever you have that. I put that in tab 10, but 
everybody has it in a different place. Yeah, so that's... Ah. You know what? I made a mistake. I was going to say there should be 300, right? Yeah, it should yep. be. So add 300 Oops. there. So that's 846. <laughs> Is that right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so it should be. Today. Wow. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, so Trevor noticed the error I made. Um, it should be three hundred thousand for the for the pay down on the ban. The first. Yep. Very first. The one. very first yep. first line item. Since we were budgeting a hundred thousand for the town. This is their seventy five percent. Yes. Yes. The rest of it I know is right. Yes. <laughs> the other sheet to write too. <laughs> well, the summary is going to have to change right. now. But I have to change. okay. Yeah. Yeah. I um, so that's that's the anticipated pay down if you so choose to do so. Um, the interest is uh, once again it's the interest on the remainder after the the twenty two million minus the. The pay downs that we've already done minus the eight million five hundred and sixty nine thousand dollar bond with USDA. This is the interest on what's left of that for an entire year. Mm -hmm. And then um, on this sheet, we have the bond principal and the bond interest. So those are the next two lines. That's once again, that's the seventy five percent that is um, that's that the wastewater treatment plant is responsible for. So it actually comes to 846,065. Yeah. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong one. All right. Oh, 45 times three is 136. No, sure. it's just incredible. Brenda forgot to bring carry over the hundred or mm -hmm. the from the other sheet. All right. Do we have a motion? We'll make a motion to recommend sewer debt service <clears throat> WWTP debt dash debt in the amount of eight hundred and forty six thousand sixty five dollars. Second. Any discussion? You good? You good? Yeah. Okay. All those in favor? That's unanimous. Six zero zero. I make a motion for eight hundred forty six thousand sixty five dollars for sewer debt service. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? I Trevor. I Trevor McKinney. Thank you. So if you look at the summary sheet, um, that'll change our picture by a hundred thousand, but. Mm -hmm. What I think is doable is to bring the use of retained earnings back up to 250000 which is what I had initially, and then the additional 50000 would be in the expected revenues, which um, I believe is also doable based on my calculations um, of the 15% increase mm -hmm. over last year's numbers or after, over 2023's numbers. Can we get a new sheet when mm -hmm. we yes. get a minute? Yeah, absolutely. Whatever that is. Whatever mm -hmm. that is. No, no, I, I have that on my, my list to do. <laughs> <laughs> do you need us to vote this summary? It's just like no summarizing everything else we yeah. voted, right? Yeah. yeah. I think so. All right. Great. Okay. Do you want to look um, at skims? Do you want to do that? We're in that section. Okay. Do you had something else in your mind? Oh, I was just thinking of the reserve fund if you wanted to readdress no. that. No. No. Skims. <laughs> Not right now. Okay. <laughs> so um, so we went back and looked at overtime numbers and felt comfortable changing that number by 15,000. So 15,000 was reduced out of the line. It's in that same section with the 
Yeah, I, I had that at the beginning of that section. Um, I don't know why. Yep. Is this the March 23rd revision? Correct. No. Thank you. So it's the overtime worked line or the overtime holiday? The overtime worked. Okay. It was. We just handed it to you, actually, in the most recent place. <laughs> no, it does not. It just says scams. That's it right there. Yeah. There you go. We're still working on it. I was about to say, do you, I, I'd like to hear a board of oversight commentary on this. Um, but if you're still working on it, then there's no reason to vote it now, right? Um, like you're still working on it for this year or you're still working on it? We're still working on it. Like board of oversight is still meeting with. Sorry. Okay. I, I don't know when our next, our next meeting is scheduled for another, it's still scheduled out, but you know, there'll be further discussion. I don't know if we want to vote on it for tonight to vote it, and then because we then still if it comes found, down, yeah, then if some you know has to come back. I know at the select okay. board we have to vote on it. You know, you know. I, I think there's further work to do. Do you guys want to vote it tonight, select board? Yeah, no, we're going to vote it so we can. Okay. I don't want. Why don't you guys go ahead? I'll make a motion to. Um... Um, our share is. 355,826. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Okay, I make a motion for $355,826. Mr. Stems, any, um, I'll second that motion. Any discussion? I just want to say that um, there is still for ongoing discussion, but for so that Brenda will have an, a number to work with, I think it's smart to vote it at the moment. Okay. What, well, we're working schedule. on the over overtime. Um, um, just that little piece. Of yes. Trying to figure out whether. It, um, I'm hoping to. I'm hoping to. Um, we can, maybe. Peel it back another fifteen thousand to twenty thousand. My goal was to have it reduced by thirty five thousand, but it hasn't been agreed upon by the crew yet. They but did this, agree. They did. Agree this is agreed on. This is agreed on okay. so far. All right. Uh, all those in favor? I chart McDaniel. All right. Do we have a motion from the Finance Committee? I move that the committee recommend the sum of $355,826 for our contribution to SKIMS. Second. Any discussion? So many, so less than two percent increase over the prior year. Right? Yes. Even though there's some numbers, quite a bit more. Um, I think what has happened, if you look at the um, the call staff numbers, um, had gone down quite a bit from. Two years ago, it was 180,000. And so yeah. it was less last year. But, um, well, the full time staff went up by two people, though. So the full time yes. staff went way up, and the call staff was expected to come down, and yeah. the overtime was expected to come the down as a result expected. of and that. I, you know, I, I had come and argued with you that um, I felt that the overtime would come down. and. Um, I think there's some more discussion on that. Well, now that we're posted at a meeting, I'll just have Mike say on, on this budget. 
I feel like um, I would love the boo to look at scheduling. And I feel like that schedule is uh, the way the schedule is set is not conducive to a, a, a to a physical budget. It's it maybe um, fits everybody's personal needs as they're scheduling and stuff. But what I see when I look at the warrant every two weeks is because um, I dig into it and I look at what people are working and they're working a 24 hour shift where, you know, 16 hours are in second and third shift. And then a couple of days later, they work 16 hours or they'll work, um, you know, so there's, they're working two days a week. And I feel like that is such a premier institution that it should be able to set a schedule that works budgetarily for the towns. And there are enough people that are gonna wanna work there. It's a pleasant place to work with good leadership and good town support. I feel like, um, you know, two days a week to work, it, it just creates huge overtime expenditures and huge second and third shift. And I understand with an ambulance, it's unique and you have the way people have to, you know, schedule over and if there's emergencies and that, but there's not emergencies 24 seven, you know, they run a whole lot less calls than our police department. Um, they're traumatic calls. It's very difficult work. I get all of that and we pay well for that, but I really encourage the boo to look at how they schedule and not um, just assume that, oh, we'll never get anybody to work unless we do these 24 hour shifts and 16 hour shifts or, you know, so I just think that scheduling a more even spread out time frame instead of 24, I, I just worry about somebody working 24 hours straight that's in, in a critical job where you're thinking about saving people's lives. I mean, if you're in a pinch, that makes sense. And if you're, you know, you know, if you're in a, you know, even tragedy or something, I understand 24 hour shift, but in every week to schedule 24 hours to work and then another 16 hours in a few days. Part of that. Mm -hmm. What's that? They're asleep yes. for part oh, well, of that of 24 hour shift. If you get a call in the middle of the night, I mean, right. I've worked jobs where I had to work yeah. in the middle of the night, and that's just that. part of the mm -hmm. that's part of the job. Yep. Right. I don't, I don't know that that worries me, but well, but I agree that um, you need to look at it and look at the overtime you're using and look at the schedule. That right. You know, stretch stretch out the schedule yeah. like three days a week instead of I don't, I don't know that. four days a week. I, I agree. Yeah. That's why Jim? Well, uh, I was just going to ask, um, have you talked to the actual um, personnel about which style of duty they prefer? Well, I, I think they would prefer getting paid more money to work 25. I mean, it, my issue is that I think it's important for the leadership to set the schedule and not the employees. Right. Uh, are some of these folks, you, is this a second job position for that? Yes, so they may work another town, you know, same 24 hours and so, you know, so it's all that they have available. Well, you know, we should be premier, uh, you know, institution and these are the scheduled hours we need you to work. Maybe I'm unrealistic about it. I, you know, I don't run a company and I don't know how EMS works, but it just seems that we were told we hired two brand new EMS you know, full-time paramedic and, and this overtime would go down and it went up and, and we're still not covering all of our shifts. And do we need three ambulances? If we can't cover two right now, why are we buying another ambulance? I just feel like, I mean, maybe it's time to replace that ambulance, but I'm just thinking, uh, you know, our envision was that maybe we would take on more towns and more runs and we would need three ambulances and we would always have one staff for a, um, football game and that kind of thing, but I'm not sure how much that works. And do we, I don't think we want to staff it with paramedics. So I'm not sure how much I look at the on-call staff and there's not a lot working. We have 30 people, exaggerations, 20 people as per diems and nobody ever works. It's like, it's all paramedics 24 seven. So 
And I think based on the, I think you asked the question last time, it's fairly obvious that having that second ambulance available on day shift doesn't pay for itself. Right. Nowhere close to paying for itself. So yep. is that even a capability we want? Right. Right. I mean, if we're not, I mean, obviously we want it. Wants. If we could have it, afford? it would be lovely, but can we afford it? Mm -hmm. So who makes these decisions? Like affordable. There's two representatives from Deerfield and um, two representatives from Sunderland and two representatives from Lakewood. Do all towns feel this way on the Board of Oversight or do some of the towns? I mean, because they pay a different amount of money. Than it. Well, Deerfield, I'm I'm uh, Deerfield is a fiscal agent. I'm not a non-voting member, but I'm encouraging us to look at this again. Yeah, yeah. We pay 50, about different amount into it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I know, so they, they might not care it. as much as we care. Right. <laughs> we, pay, we pay we pay about fifty one percent. They're I mean they're just as strapped as we. Yeah, I sure. I think they do care. I think they do. Yep. Could we cut back and rely on mutual aid? Well, we do. I think now, like when we have problems, we we're, um, you know, we're seeing Northampton up here and and different things. So, but I think we provide more mutual yeah, aid than yeah, we he get. Said, right. He said right. The whole, yeah. Ten yeah. percent. Well, although uh, um, the Skims director did point out that they bill for all those mm -hmm. aid costs. Right. And, I, and they provide fantastic service that has nothing to do with, I mean, I, I think it's, I'm so proud of South County EMS and what it provides to our yeah. residents. It's just amazing. I'm just thinking of budget and longevity and how, and if we're looking at maybe, um, you know, this is a different subject, but looking at rolling that in, in a year or so into, you know, our budget and not just relying on, Hey, we've got enough free cash to fund it this year. Um, we're going to have to get a lot more, you know, we may have to just get a little more tight on that budget. Um, what the plan is, we're going to look at the scheduling that is scheduled for Mar like March, and then what the actual schedule worked out to be. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do that. In March. So okay. We'll okay. Have Good. Thank you. And I'm wondering if the director could take on more hours too with like not work more hours, but take on be more the hours. coverage for the right for that um, second ambulance because it sounded like the director wasn't on call very much. And I don't know. and I I wonder too if the South Deerfield Fire District would be willing to help sometimes when they need an extra person. Um, somebody mentioned that to me today that 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 they've That's been more than willing idea. to help. Be but haven't been asked. And they have, do they have people who are maybe EMT EMTs, both Bob, both that... Bob and Kurt are EMTs. Interesting. And they could drive them. Yeah. That's very interesting. Hmm. I'm going to just throw okay. this out there and we can see where it goes, but I'm going to make a motion that we reduce the budget from 355,000 to 345,826. That would be Deerfield share, which is half, right? Mm -hmm. Which means the total budget would come down 20,000 or a little more, let's see. A little more than 20,000. Are we a little more? We're, yeah. we're at 51.76 and 51.76. Okay. <laughs> so it'll be a little more. <laughs> really so it. our bottom line that we pay is 355,826. So I'm going to make a motion that that changes to 345,826, which reduces our part of the budget by 10,000. So the total budget would come down a little less than 20,000 and that EMS would have to, I mean, the other towns have to agree to it too, but EMS would have to figure out where that 20,000 came from. Budget doesn't show us how they did last year in terms of what was budgeted it, and whether they went over. Uh, it doesn't. Okay. Um, I can certainly provide that to you. Curious. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I could grab that right now. Should I do that? I mean, so we don't have that for any year because no, what we, we pay is just what we pay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that in the budget? Does that show up as I retain 
Yes. Ultimately, yes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So they rarely spend the full amount and they take in usually a little more, which which is good because they should budget conservatively yeah. for the revenue. Yes. Yeah. Of course, they're using that number. That goes they, back in. Right. 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 So can I... I made a motion. Is there? I will second, second that motion. There is a second. Okay. This is technically an amendment. Yes. Yeah. Amendment. It's a motion to amend the yeah. motion. Oh, because there was already a motion. There was already a motion for the so full amendment. So we have to vote twice. Um, the the board of oversight hopes to reduce the overtime by another twenty thousand, fifteen to twenty thousand. I just want to clarify that was my goal. That's okay. So maybe not the board of oversight, mm -hmm. but but there is hope out there that that could happen. And I have the feeling personally that there's an awful lot of overtime in this budget. There's the new overtime holiday pay line that didn't used to be in there. So that used to be worked into well, the other the stuff. The reason and why we pulled it out is because we want to show- I Make it clear. Clear. Good. That one is by the bylaws and that's been pretty consistent. We have no really choice on that um, because they have to pay yeah. that way. That but the overtime, the work overtime is what we were, when I had called called you, um, I mean, talked to you last year, you know, the, the two full time was supposed to reduce that line. Yeah. And in my mind, it was reducing the full time. So, when I asked when, when, um, when I missed the meeting, when the student director, the director, yes, um, was here, um, were these questions asked of the director? Mm -hmm. yeah. We went through yes. the whole thing. Okay. Yeah, and we then, asked her all this. So was the director sort of under the clear idea that we're all asking for better management of schedules? Was there a knowledge that there was a problem and a commitment to do something? I've or, been asking or, for years. Okay, well, I understand that you, you're, yeah. I um, felt like there was... Uh, like just the laid out rationale for why it was what it was, not in an acknowledgement that it's right. getting better. Right. That's how I read it. Yeah. Yeah. So I would. And then do we know? We don't know, but when you're talking about 24 hour shifts, which I agree are a problem, even, I mean, even less, I'm just fired by the and have those kind of shifts, you know, over the last 12 hours. But, they generally don't go into a 24 hour unless there's a reason, you know, emergency. But are you saying people are actually for the are scheduled for yes. the Yes. It's not because somebody's calling out sick and correct. And I think they enjoy that because, so it, yeah, that, but, I mean, yeah, but that is what it's being scheduled. That's, like policy position. that's correct. That's how, the, right. But are you getting paid overtime if that's your, no, that's your yeah. share shift? Well, you are, you're, well, you're then compressed with, yes. uh, with a, well, if you stay on your 16 hour one, because you're scheduled for 16 hours also mm -hmm. that week. Mm -hmm. So if your 24 hour shift went over, if you had a call at the same at the tail mm -hmm. end of the 24, and then you had the work the six scheduled for the 16, even if you work the 16, then you're over your. Mm -hmm. But I mean, that would be true no matter what this shift schedule yeah. was. That's at some point, somebody's going to hit a call right when they're about to go off. Yeah. Is, is some of that overtime caused by the SWAT team work? And I understood that maybe that is no longer. Uh, we put it, the yeah, select work in the Okay. To clarify for the revision. So, so I think that alone would reduce most likely some of the overtime, just a thought. Do they spend the overtime at the do you call it the station? Sleeping like fire departments do, or whatever are they home? Like being at the help at the hospital. No, 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 not the overtime. Just say the 24 hours. Do they spend mm -hmm. it sleeping? Yeah, they, at the, well, they sleep unless you get home. Yeah, the, well, I'm saying they could be the station. They're sleeping right. at the, the station. Yes, at the they're, station. They're, they're ready to roll. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. They're re ready to roll. But doesn't the second and third shift uh, pay differential come into play when you're doing a 24 hour schedule? I mean, yeah, you're so getting first, price second, cost. third shift differential just in those 24 hours. And then. Sure, but you'd be paying it to somebody else if somebody else is working it. You're going to pay it to whoever, whether it's a per diem person. I see what or you're a, saying. A I see what you're saying. Person. So that's, that's a. That doesn't issue. matter. Got yeah, it. Whether they get issue. it or somebody else get it because it's that other time frame in the night. Right. Understood. Okay. That makes sense. Is, is there any uh, labor contract here? No, not not with them. No. Have you considered having the second ambulance run fewer hours or fewer days? It's, it's the second ambulance is just on one shift already. Mm -hmm. So during the middle of the day, right? Yeah. Like ninety five or something like that. Six. So it's either on or off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With three point five calls a day. The same. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's it. And then the third ambulance. All right. Not so there's a running. motion and a second out to amend the bottom line. Does anyone any further discussion? All right. All those in favor of what? Of the yeah. amendment to change the bottom line from 355 to 345. Six. So that's unanimous 600. Zero, zero. So we now have an amended motion on the table for SCEMS Enterprise Fund at 345,826. Any discussion on that motion? No. All those in favor? Okay. Sorry, you went so quick. Is is there anything on here that tells us how the revenue is coming in except for these fixed numbers? Like this is 525, like 30, 575, and full numbers that are budgeted. Yeah, so so that's just that's just a conservative estimate of revenues. Okay. I mean, we we okay. should we should be over that, and we always are. We always are. Okay. Yeah. So what happens now? How do you so? I will take an action item to email the other finance committee chairs that tell them that this is what we voted. Um, it, do you want me to um, email Zoe also and tell her that that's what we voted at this? I will do that. Um, and then did the board of oversight, I assume I should give them, the, I don't know who's on the board of oversight. Can, can you take that? Like, if I include you on the email, can you forward it to the appropriate? Yeah. Okay. Right down to you do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm going to email. What did you just say? Financial chairs, Zoe and Carolyn, who will tell the board of oversight. Okay. Mm -hmm. Something else I was just going to mention. The left. Oh, the left. One thing that's not here. The overtime budget here has been around 10% of the total salary and wages since 2018. In 2023, it actually dropped in all the protests. Um, the reason. And the book was already like went in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Right. Suddenly, and now we're having a discussion. But, but part of that was, um, you know, COVID. It was catching up with COVID, and well, I'm going back to. But they hired another person. Yeah. They hired two more, two more people. Two more people. And and, and I think they, in 2023, um, the plan was for 91 or 92,000 in overtime, and we asked we asked for a reduction. Right. I was going to say, and this has been a. Yeah. A constant. And we don't know. Yes. That's a good question. It would be interesting to see that, though. Um, um, yeah. We'll Not tonight. What happened? They picked it from calls. All the staff. 
they made a new line. Um, That's what. I don't know who it was. It wasn't that it was under budgeted total, but in the total bottom line, yeah, the budget. shift was from fall staff right to over. Okay, let's do the library. All right. What numbers library? Yeah. Yeah. Station number six. Good evening. Good evening. Yep. <laughs> so pretty much the um the budget is level with um I think the there's one increase um, that I'll, I'll focus on in a minute, um, but the building maintenance, there was just a slight increase in cost for the um, annual lift inspection, uh, lift maintenance, sorry. And then um, for equipment, I just know based on um, spending in the past, I think that that budget line needs to go up a little bit. Um, and I think, oh, sorry, supplies that also went up a little bit because um, that's, that's just what, based on spending. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but the, the big item, well, actually it's not gonna be that big right um, in the next couple of years is to give an additional two hours to the head of adult services um, that would put them into, because right now they're, they have been working 19.75 hours a week. And that position has been working those hours for several years. And then when a longtime employee uh, retired two years ago and we hired a new employee, we worked with the personnel committee to, um, to augment that position and change the title. And then um, also the timing of just increase in need at the library especially um, affecting this position because they're like the, the point of contact and it's part of their job description to do what they uh, have to do to serve these needs that I, I really need, the library needs them to work, be available more hours because we're also bringing our um, open hours back up to pre-COVID numbers. And because we had another person that retired in December, very, very part-time, I was able to, um, take those hours and disperse them to the staff, except for this position, because that would have put them over 20 hours a week, which brings them into the benefit of position. So I'm asking because of, <clears throat> I did send an outlined, um, you know, re reasoning for this. And um, so that would put them into the exempt, I mean, the um, benefit of position. And so that would bring, and also the person who's in this position um, does not need any benefits. Um, so I know that's not the position, that's the person, but this person is you know, gonna be here for a while, a long time, hopefully. Um, and that would, really, that would really serve the library well. We're really, really squished, especially in this position and um, you know, needing to bring their hours up to our open hours. Um, and I, I don't want to hire really, really part-time staff. You know, instead I was augmenting the hours of the other staff uh, but because all the staff took a cut um, in um, 2020 or FY 2021 because of COVID. And so I'm kind of bringing them a little bit back and adding the hours I could add from that retired position. So that is the probably the most significant change. Um, everything else is as predicted with the um, moving up the compensation uh, plan and the percentage that we need to spend um, to meet the state criteria for state aid on library materials such as books, ebooks, um, movies, audio, and such. And then um, the offsetting of the budget by the Tilton Fund. Um, the state aid, the Friends of the Tilton Library, and other grants that we get. Um, so that's that. Questions? With the uh, personnel card, the, like the uh, health insurance, 
retirement costs. Where is that? That's elsewhere in the book as it relates to the library. So Candace, Candace pointed out that the person that they have in the position that they'd like to move up to a benefited position is not taking insurance, but she would still be eligible for the retirement and also for Medicare, which is 1.45% of her salary, which is really minimal, but, but the retirement will add up at some point in time. Yes. So assuming that we do that, couldn't that person, if there's a change in coverage from their spouse, you know, in, in this situation, could they uh, choose to elect to to receive benefits yeah. at any point? So, yeah. you know, there's kind of some risk there. Okay. And then are, are they going to be eligible for OPEB as well if they get bumped up? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So we'll have the OPEB costs. All right. Then uh, how many hours is the library open currently? Uh, 30. 30? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. On the website, it shows 27. Um, so what would that take us up to for coverage <clears throat> if we increase the hours here? Well, we've, we increased our hours uh, on March 6th. So I don't okay. know the website it shows it's been altered to show that. Um, so we are working, um, we are open 30 hours now. We have been for a couple of weeks. Oh, good. Yeah. And so, so will, will it expand to more than 30 hours with this, um, person working more hours? Um, no, I just said I'm having to cover her. But you're having to cover her. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and I see that the director position has uh, 1,976 hours for the year. Mm -hmm. So that averages out to about, what's that, 40 hours a week for 49 weeks? Uh, that's uh, 38 hours. Oh, 38. Okay. Yeah. Oh, all right. That makes sense. So, um, yeah, the, the, those are my questions. Um, what impact is the uh, planned construction likely to have? Uh, will will that reduce library operations once ground is broken this coming fiscal year? Um, no, the plan isn't to reduce because we'll be whatever temporary space we're in, we're in will still be operating fully. Um, and the only impact, and it's so unknown because you know we haven't gone through this before is that we won't be in the building for half the year, but we will be in another building. So it depends on what the costs are for the temporary space. And I don't know if during construction, you know, will what utilities will be used during construction um, as far as, I just don't know. So that's, some that's part of the construction cost though, right? Some of it would be, yeah. yeah. Just... And so when we were discussing this as she was preparing your budget, we kind of agreed that it might be better just to budget for what normally would happen and see what happens when the construction starts as to whether we need to make some adjustments. So when we have the temporary space, I assume the temporary space is going to be much smaller yes. than the current space, but well, you're still going to have the full staff in there? Yes, but because it's a staggered schedule, um, you know, we will be able to spread out enough it's not like we all work together at the same time. You know, there's evening staff and weekend staff. Um, there's only, of the regular staff, there's only three of us at the, in the building at one time during the day. And it also depends on, for the temporary spaces, there's also an unknown because um, we're, Right now, Casey and our uh, project manager, Dan Pilata, they're putting together um, a request for proposals for space that can be either um, given to us in kind um, or rented to us. And we have the trustees came up with 1500 uh, minimum square feet and more is better depending on what the cost is or especially if it's free. Mm -hmm. And we don't, so we don't know what our cost will be, um, but you know, we'll, as far as the, the space in the current building, um, library building, you know, we won't be using nearly as much of the utilities um, in that space. And then in the temporary space, because it's smaller, I'm sure that will be a reduced amount as well. It's just unknown. But you know. the, am I not understanding properly that the rented space is part of the construction costs? There right? is a budget for that. And it goes against the, that. There's a line, there's a line budget, item. Right? Yes. It's, so that's not in here. Right. Right. Okay. Right. 
Mm -hmm. I'm very, uh, honestly, very uncomfortable with that because of the increase to the budget in the other line items and the fact that once the new building is built, we're going to see a huge increase in um, electricity costs, likely. I guess some of that hopefully will be offset by solar. Um, yeah, but we're we're anticipating that this budget is going to go up next year, or whenever the building's done. Well, it seems like um, probably the electricity. So, so when is the building going to be done? Uh, the projected schedule is um, January two thousand twenty-five. Okay, January. Okay. Yeah. Will your hours increase with the new? No. Plan? No, I mean, I think anything that we do with an increase to open hours, because that would lead to an increase in staff requirement, would have to be incremental. And so I feel like, you know, what we um, do now is, you know, the minimum amount of hours that's required for the state to get state aid for the town of our size is, I believe, 25 hours. Um, and so, you know, 30 hours feels like a, a healthy amount of time to be open. And we do kind of like to spread it out so it feels like, um, you know, that we're reaching different needs of the community as far as when they can get to the library. And so we don't have plans to um, increase that right away. I think that's something that could happen incrementally, but we'll have to wait and see. I think the first couple of years in the building, we'll have to see what the capacity is, um, how that changes. And that's been sort of the protocol of some of the libraries that we've visited that have gone through the construction phase that they did not increase their staffing the first several years. Um, they really had to see how the space flowed and what they needed to do. And then there's grants to write for to, you know, if you want to hire somebody for, you know, a teen advisor or something like that to, to test the waters to see, you know, the effectiveness of that. Yes. But that only covers it like the first couple of years or something. And then the town well, takes on that really expense. demonstrate is that a need that's, you know, warranted right. and then be able to bring that back to, you know, show justification for the increase. John, so the state, like bases, the state base is aid based on the town size, not the library size. Is that yeah. right? Yes. Okay. Other question. You can have a more shelf space. You can have more books. Who, how is that paid for? I know that doesn't affect this budget, but I'm just curious what's going to happen a year and a half from now. Well, I mean, we get a set budget that we, um, you know, that the percentage every year of, of the budget is 20% because based on our population size. And so we spend that budget where right now, you know, we are um, at the mercy of limited space. So we don't get to buy as many books as we'd like to. So we spend more money on other items in the library. And so when we have a bigger space for books, um, you know, we would that, that balance would change or could change. And right now, every time we buy a new book, we have to take one off the shelf. So we would be able to keep a larger collection without expending more. I'm confused. Where would the money come from? The new books? I guess I missed that. Um, it would, we'd have the same pot of money. It's just that right now, you know, we have books, DVDs, uh, audio, um, we have yeah. eBooks, we have a whole range of what's called library uh, materials. And um, so it's, it's always a, a, just a balancing game of what we have space for, what's in demand, what's popular. Um, and so that's always changing. And so that as far as like the books go, we could increase the books. And as CD audio books and DVDs are being used less often, that budget would go down. And I think what you're saying too is that you would um, you would not have to. So you'd buy the books as you normally buy them, but you wouldn't have to take the book off the shelf. Right. So you right. could have more space still buying the same amount of books. You'd have more to go through. Right. Because you wouldn't be removing them. Right. Got it. Okay, okay. got it. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead, Beth. Um, so you're you're going to be open for 30 hours a week. And was that what you used to be open in like 2019? Well, um, 2019, 2019, we're open 33 hours, but our staff and I noticed that um, because um, when I started in 2018, a, pre, a few years previous to that, um, there was a, an experiment to see if Fridays should be open because people were, you know, wondering if we would open on Fridays and, you know, um, some libraries in the area are are open on Fridays. And we found that it was not a high traffic. In fact, it was a very, very low traffic area. So we decided not to go back to that right now. Um, but back in like 2019, it looks like you had possibly fewer employees. Did people 
were, were the hours split up differently? I don't think we had fewer employees. No. Okay. No, I no, might no. be reading it wrong. No. <laughs> I think I mean, it might have been fewer part time. Oh, okay. That yeah. covered for the regulars. No, I don't. I don't think so. But, but no, it would have been. Yeah. We've only replaced the people that have left. It's like maybe right. one fewer or something. I'm just looking at the sheet. Oh, know. sure, I, sure. No, I, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we did add a teen librarian. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. The, and can that person work at the library? Like, can one person be there alone or is no? No. No. You always no. have three people. Well, on? because of, well, no, three people because it's two staff member and the director. I'm not there in the evenings and weekends unless um, I do my rotation shift. I work one just to, you know, do my part. I work at the desk for uh, Thursday um, evenings and one Saturday a month and one, ne and one needed for coverage. Um, but we need to have one person on each floor. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So not obvious question, but why is that? Well, just for safety reasons to, to have someone upstairs and have nobody else in the building if something's happening is it on like both a floors. Statutory requirement or something or? Uh, I'm not sure. Because I'm having a hard time finding, figuring out like, you know, what the limiting factor is for how many hours are open because my, my guess is people are probably going to want to use the library more. You know, I, I I have a library card myself and have, you know, used the, our, our library and I've also used the Sunderland library and the UMass libraries fairly heavily. And I, I would imagine that my household would be far more interested in using the new library than the current one. So if we're somehow stopping with a director and a bunch of part-time staff at 30 hours, um, I guess what's going to happen when the demand goes up? Like, is there any way that we might be able to redo schedules or something to get this closer to 40 hours a week? Um, well, we had, um, I think some of you were back in October, were at the Zoom meeting where we invited the MBLC, the architect, and three people from uh, local libraries that had gone through this procedure um, sometime in the last 10 years. And both Hadley, who got their new building um, about two years ago, and Sunderland, I think it's been about 15 years, and that neither of them have had to expand their staff. Um, because what they both said was that um, in the smaller building, because you got less people, but there was still enough, you know, they, they didn't want to like chop up all the hours and have so few hours that they were open, um, that there wasn't a constant stream of steady work happening. Mm -hmm. But then when the, um, the bigger buildings came into play, then the staff kind of like, they were, they put on, they had more work, but it wasn't. Um, an unreasonable amount of work. It just it was felt like a, a normal workload. Uh, I'm not being very eloquent about it. I know that um, Patrick, the director of the Hadley Library, the way he said it was, it was very, very understandable, but um, he felt like he didn't need to hire more because, um, well, first of all, the way that libraries are designed, it's very, very conscious of having what's called good sight lines. Mm. So that even if you have a lot of space, um, I could be, you could be sitting here and, um, and across the room, where the library is now is right here in the new building you'll be right there but as long as the space is open enough you can still serve you know you can still see so it's not like you need um, more staff um, you might have to be busier and the prediction is that the first year uh, it triples in um, and then it, because it's very exciting it's new and then it dies down to about to about double and the way that we operate not right now that would be totally doable for us to to take on that capacity at 30 hours yes Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We do. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's that's what I'm concerned with is we're investing in a, in a, a lot of money uh, for something that's going to be open just 30 hours a week. I, I, that just seems crazy to me. Um, but the flip side of that is when we don't know really what's going to happen. The other thing is we're we're debating a budget right now that's about one percent of our total yeah. town budget. And frankly, with um, some of the increase in stuff that you're talking about, Candace, it's still coming to us with a only a three and a half percent increase, which it seems to be relatively um pretty good or budget conscious given some of the things that we were dealing with. So um, second. 
Yeah. So my guess too is that the additional two hours for the head of adult services is um, partially because you need two more hours of work, but it could go to a part-time person. So giving it to this person makes them a full-time employee, gives them a retirement. So it's sort of a reward for or a recognition or something of yeah, the, the, the way that responsibility our, of the position or something yes. like that. Is that I mean, I feel like um, you know, the children's library went through the same thing, I don't know how many years ago before my time, but um the previous director. Because you are kind of in some ways you're a department head, in some ways. You're not a department head the way we talk about it here, but within our department, um, you know, they're they're running the show. She runs the the person on the, in this position runs the show upstairs with my supervision, but I've got a whole other bag of you know uh, worms to deal with. And then um, downstairs, the the children's librarian's running the show, and you know it's a lot of responsibility for both people. And so I kind of feel like what I want to do with this position is kind of bring it up to what the children's librarian position was brought up to you know years years ago. And she's very qualified, and she has many years of experience. But you've also added a young adult position. Yes. That has more response last year, not this year, obviously. Right, right. But that has more responsibility than just a, a library assistant or something, right? Mm -hmm. so. well, we made a motion. No, we have no motion yet. Would you like to make a motion? Yeah, a motion <laughs> to approve Tilton Library, I recommend Tilton Library budget of 210068 account 610.54. Second. Okay. I have one more question that's not completely about this budget, but um, okay, so it's still <laughs> about hours. I think I feel a little bit the same as Mark. So in the new library, won't there be like a commute, a room, a community room that's mm -hmm. like, like Sunderland has, right? Mm -hmm. I'm imagining. Um, and so, but that wouldn't be available to like, I mean, this sounds like that, but wouldn't be available when the library is closed, right? Oh, sure it would be. Yeah, it will. Oh, it will be. That's when the, the beauty of the design is that that whole part of the building where the community room is and then like the, the lobby. So you walk in and there's a lobby. Mm -hmm. And then from the lobby, you go um, to where the stairwell and the elevator are. That part has another door that mm -hmm. gets locked at night. Mm -hmm. And so someone would get, if it wasn't staff, it was someone would get a key and we'd have a whole key reservation system that they would be able to use the entrance, um, um, the community room that has a kitchen and storage, and there's uh, two two uh, toilets. Um, so that would be available to, and the person who has the key will be responsible for that. And we'll have a policy that the trustees and I will put together. That's really common uh, for libraries to have, um, as far as like you know, re reserving and you know, uh, usage, behavior, and stuff like that. I highly recommend just like key fobs. You know, like to get in the yeah. building here and stuff just for it's just the future and that way you know who's going in and, and then you can and they can't take it over to the hardware store right yes good. exactly <laughs> and they can, you know you know who's coming in or when and, and you can like say okay the, this group comes in every third thursday of the month and then they to right. keep, they get in but they can't get in other times you know, right other certain times right. might be worth doing if you can fit in the budget you yeah know, to do yeah it makes sense to do yeah because we anticipate <laughs> that um you know that some some staff, particularly me, will be working, uh, will be shifting my, which I have done already for years, you yeah. know, uh, shift my hours. I come in a few hours late if I'm doing yeah. a program and I did that last night. Yeah. And so I would be do, continue to do that. And then um, sometimes the children's librarian does that, you know, a few hours here, a few hours there. Yeah. And then um, anyone who, anyone in the community who wants to use the room for uh, a meeting or a program, you know, that would also be, um, and it wouldn't have to be within the hours. And also for the town of our size, I think if we compare, um, and I can do that for you if you'd like and, and bring get that information to you, to other towns, what the hours are, especially if you look at towns that did have um, library expansions like Sunderland, Hadley, uh, Irving, um, okay. South Hadley, and just see what their hours, mm -hmm. what their hours are, are like compared to ours and, and what their population is. I think Sunderland is probably the closest population wise to us because Greenfield is like three or four yeah. times as four yeah. five times the size. So, so probably, um, Much more. Yeah. It would be a better choice because Sunderland is actually oh they're half okay. They're less yeah. 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 So
Anyway, go ahead, Mark. I just have one other question. I, I know sure. that there's a, a, one, one person at the library that works in both Sunderland and in Deerfield. Yep. Uh, for for the, the budget item here for payroll, is that just Deerfield's, the, the Deerfield hours that that oh, yes. works? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's a lot of misconception about use. I think there's a lot of misconception in the town about use of the community room, which I think is great. But when you were going for the grant and the vote, the appropriation for the loan, a lot of people say, "Why should we pay for a library if we can't have a room for the community?" And that would. And yeah. but I think it it would help you to make it public that yeah. it can be used. Yeah. I think there's a big misunderstanding out there. I, I think it was. It was just that it couldn't be a pri the primary purpose could not be for the community. It, we, right. we, you know, there was like a little like, you know, it's Asterisk. for the library. Yeah. Do we get so we, library yeah. Is first it was, yeah, I was also confirmed that there is no consequence as far as, you know, nobody. Right. No, I'm going to take it back. Are, are coming and reading us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we have a library of police. <laughs> take the room back. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm going to share it so um i i think that the library does a fantastic job oh. and that you're working very hard yeah. and um very conscientiously i am still going to vote against this because i feel like a lot of departments all over the town are increasing no malice intended right mm -hmm. um you when when you work in your position and you're enthusiastic about what you do and you're saying if we could do this you know look at all the things i could do look at the you know increasing responsibility but i think we're seeing a lot of departments increasing the personnel increasing the scope of the jobs and i am very uncomfortable with where our our budget is going um, because of that so it is not like, I do not think the library does a bad job. I don't think you deserve, you know, like I'm saying, you know, you don't deserve this money because you're whatever, but I, I do not, I am not comfortable um, with the increases that we're seeing all over the town. So any other discussion or comments? Okay, so it has been moved and seconded for Tilton Library 610-5400 at 210,068. Any further discussion or questions? All those in favor? One, two, four. Opposed? One, abstaining? One, so that passes for one, one. I make a motion. Um, for two hundred ten thousand sixty-eight dollars in Tilton Library. I'll second the motion. Any discussion? Any? Um, all those in favor? Hi, Carl. Hi, Trevor. Thank you. All Thank right. you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Great night. Oh, Thanks for too. coming in. Appreciate it. <laughs> Let me just look at it real quick, no, but no, I don't think no. so. Do you need this one? Copy down? Scoop home? No, I, okay. yeah. I think we have some that <laughs> still need this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. Brenda, what else do we have that we haven't voted? Um, we haven't voted the uh, reserve fund. Uh, we did. I thought you did we vote no, it? we didn't. We didn't vote it. We didn't vote it. Did yeah, you guys vote it? Did you two I vote? We voted the one twenty the other day. You might have, but the finance committee the finance held off. Finance committee has not voted that. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah Is that in tab twelve? We better revote that. Okay. I thought we did. Well, let's see what they say. I mean, I I would support them if they. Vote. I think they need the money. I'm good with that too. But oh, oh we didn't vote contract and service. We did. Oh, you you didn't. Okay. No, we did not. One, yeah. two, we did. I had a oh, hold on it until their last one. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. I have it in twelve. Mine's in twelve what reserve fund. Yeah. What's the account? But it says one thirty two five hundred. Oh, fifty four hundred. But it's in tab twelve because it's a special article. <laughs> it's like reading it. Okay. I was like, wait a second. What? Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. you're right. I I have that you voted it at 120,000 last year. Oh, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, but we didn't. I just right. Yeah, you voted it at 120. Oh, okay. 
I, I thought we voted that. No. They're all alphabetically. So wait, mine says one hundred. So just yeah, it does. Just so you know what's in this budget right now, everything that we've got to come to our eighteen million one hundred and fifty-eight thousand. You'll see the revenues are budgeted at uh is it eighteen million one hundred and eighty one thousand. So you've got a little bit of room if you decided that you wanted to increase the reserve fund. All right, so say that again. So no, it has nothing to do. That was that was just in the wastewater treatment plant budget, which is fully self-supporting. Yeah. So if if you look at the if you want to look at the revenue number, yeah, um, let's do that. That I handed out. Can, can I ask you a quick question about on here? So the numbers um, for like the sewer and all those things, they're not filled in, but they don't. Affect. Right. Because they don't affect the town's budget. They're a self-supporting enterprise. Fund. Enterprise. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Carolyn, I don't think we voted in Frontier. I don't think we voted Frontier. Can I do that? Okay. Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve Frontier Regional School at $4,306,795. Any further discussion? All those in favor? I Trevor McDaniel. Yeah, I think we held off on schools for some reason. I know, I understand. But I got it. Oh, I see. No. All right. So let's look at what? revenue detail. Yeah, I got it. You want to do that? Um, yeah. So the revenue detail I, I handed out to you earlier tonight. Okay. Um, the only thing that I changed on here is on the second page. Right. So we have a cemetery receipts reserved for appropriation fund that for years and years and years has just been building because every time we sell a cemetery plot, it goes into that fund. Now, there have been two times that we've used money out of there um, that I can remember in the last seven, eight years, and that was for two lawnmowers, one one year and one five, six years later. <clears throat> so I believe, and Casey, I think Casey looked it up, but we should be able to use that receipts reserve for appropriation fund to cover certain things in the budget that we spend on cemeteries. I think we talked about this last mm -hmm. week. We did. And um, Kevin came up with a number that on an average, he uses $10,000 worth of labor time, um, maintenance of the lawnmowers, um, fuel. fuel, other things towards or on those cemeteries. So, I plugged in here money coming from the receipts reserved for appropriation fund of $10,000. And I hope that we should be able to sustain this on an ongoing basis because we're looking at increasing fees so that they're more reasonable based mm -hmm. on what other cemeteries are charging for the lots and so on and so forth. I, I just told, yeah, we just voted for the increase in fees. You did, great, okay. So that's the number that I plugged in for that. And then if you look at the last line of that other funding sources um, account or uh, uh, section, Wetlands Protection Fund. So the Wetlands Protection Fund has been building year after year after year <laughs> and because we put money in there for applications and we never spend any money out of it. But we, um, Amy <laughs> found the Mass General Law or rather the IGR that talked about what you can do with that wetlands protection fund. It was from 1998, but she couldn't find anything more recent. And in there, it said that you could use money to support your budget for the amount of time that somebody in the inspections department was spending on wetlands related um, work. So Amy did a quick little figure of what she thought she would, she would spend hour wise um, she did a minimum and a maximum. I picked something in between and applied that wage and her benefits to an amount that we could use out of the wetlands protection fund. Perfect. So that is the 4,700 that's plugged in there. So that added to the um, to the revenues. So those will be two funding sources 
if you so choose, that will be applied towards the omnibus budget um, at our annual town meeting. Just curious, so how much is in those things? Take it money About 30, 32,000 in both of them. Yep. Um, so that brings our revenues to 18,186,000. Um, you compare that to page four of our expenditures and you have an extra $27,900, something like that. Well, then, <laughs> Woo then we voted, the selectmen have already voted your reserve fund for 20000 So we have we did, So you're buying pizza. Yeah. Yeah. We, we had had already agreed to. We did not. We, we tabled it, I believe. Oh, that's right. And and that's that's based on I you'll also see on page four of your budget summary that I plugged in uh, an amount for snow and ice. Is thank you. This is nowhere close to covering our deficit because our deficit is probably going to be closer to ninety thousand, if not more. Um, but this would would go towards that so that when we get to the end of the year and we do an appropriation transfer or a reserve fund transfer, we we we'll be able to hopefully cover the rest of the overage. What's the shortfall on that? I didn't. I'm, I, right now I'm thinking it's at 90, it's over 90,000. It and it wasn't even a bad winter and who knows what's still to come. Um, I, I asked uh, the staff at the highway department to get me invoices and everything by Monday so that we know for sure what we're going to be over. So they're contacting the contractors right now. I don't think they have any more uh, ice um, or snow, excuse me. Yeah. I don't think they have any more um, salt purchases. Right. Yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure Kevin was collecting that money because Joe Cumberford is trying to put in money for that storm. Right, see if they can. He, he is trying to track problem. that, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Casey, you have something? I just wanted to also add um, in terms of re reserve fund, is legal we're already over we're over on legal so we're going to have to find a funding source to to meet that um, and that's a that's a large chunk as well it is a large chunk mm -hmm. and we're over for this fiscal year yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah how much is left in reserve fund now i believe it's about ninety thousand, right yeah i don't think we spent much i, I, I want to say it is i i didn't actually look at it but i think it's about ninety thousand as well <clears throat> Questions about how free cash works, the way you put that on here. So, um, is the number so free cash is something that we figure out at the end of the fiscal year as well, right? Okay, so just for newbie purposes here, so the fiscal year 23 that you have on here, it says free cash, but it says a million and 42 free cash. That's an estimate, though. No, so our free cash is certified based on our June 30 numbers, yep. but it's available to us on July 1 to use all through the next fiscal year until June 30th. So that is a certified free cash number. That is actually what DOR certified for us to use. We cannot use anything more than that. Okay, so the billion 42 is what was for this past year. You're right. So, yep. And then the... What is uh, so the free cash? And I just wondering how, how you're so, saying so, so, no. So, oh. the number you need to be looking at is FY24. Yep. Okay. So, that's the number that was certified. It's actually 959588 plus what we spent in October. So, it was uh, originally certified at a million ninety two thousand something like that. Okay. And then at that would have been special June town meeting 2023. No. So so what we can use on on this at this town meeting is nine hundred and fifty nine thousand. That was what was certified as of July one of two thousand twenty two. To be used not during the next year, but to be used. This no, this year we haven't we haven't be, used be, to be used or left on the table as of June thirtieth. You can either use it or not use it. Then, so then it gets recertified again. So then in the fall and at the next town meeting, we'll have another pot of money to 
So we haven't yes. spent any since special town meeting, I think is what you're saying, right? So at special at special town meeting in the fall, we say, well, we've got some money, we're going to pay off. Yeah, I think uh, we used 135,000 yeah, or 136,000 for a one or something like and that. And then we leave it for the next year annual town meeting. We say, okay, we're going to use that towards our budget this year. And then, you know, it just, the number keeps getting a little smaller, but... Um, and so in this in this revenue number, I'm anticipating that you're willing to leave $175,000 left in that pot of money so that it could be applied to next year's free cash number. And that's smaller than we've done in past years. Uh, not by much. Uh, last year it was 180,000, so... Yep. Um, a little bit less, but generally less than what we normally do. Yes. And we consciously did that, right? We, yep. We've been slowly kind of going because we were leaving 500,000 or 400,000. We're like, Whoa. well, and then you'd, and then you'd up, would end up with a million eight and everybody would be yeah. complaining that we had way too much free cash. Yeah, so we're the less money you leave on the table, probably the less money you're going to have in free, free cash the following year. Yep. Most likely, but not necessarily always so. Yeah. The reserve, the reserve fund is the fund that we use when someone comes to the financial committee during yeah. the year. for the extraordinary and unforeseen yeah. expenses. Yeah, but we could use yeah. free cash. Different. You, you could reserve. No, it would have to be voted at right town at, at town meeting, right? Which is Andrew which is why the yes. the snow and ice number I plugged in for what might be extra. So why don't we bump up the reserve fund a lot? And then we won't have to go to town meeting to use it. I'm not trying to pull the wool over anybody's eyes, but it just might make things a lot easier. <laughs> well, it would it certainly make it easier to use during the year without waiting to town meeting for right. it. Yeah. That's... But do we but run out of reserve fund right now? Rarely. Um, you'll see. Um, where's that at? Okay. So You've used anywhere from thirty or twenty thousand to last year eighty eighty three thousand in fiscal twenty two. Last year we used a lot. A lot of it is so there is we can't use the reserve fund for anything though, right? right? It has right. to be something that's already a line item. I'm asking. Mm -hmm. Yes. It has to already be a line item and it has to be unforeseen and unexpected. Right. 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 Um, that's right. And then from and then right. from May 1st until July 15th, you can cover any other shortages by moving money between appropriations. Great. I actually have a question. So legal fees don't feel like they're unexpected and unforeseen at this point. Like, you know, no, I'm serious. Like, you know that they're going to be more. So that seems well. Well, I don't think we knew at the time no, back that, then, but, that we budgeted. But budgeting for next year. We Which is why we we are going to sue us. Truly. Yeah, but that's why we're budgeting more for next year than what we budgeted in past years. It seems like we are in more cases than we have been in the past. That's a problem. And and it's also um, an HR thing, you know, if we have labor issues, and that's you know that comes up more than it has ever happened. I, I would say the trend is increasing. So, what do so your budget detail has all the budgets in front of us. There's no capital at all. So all the capital items are either out of the capital stabilization or ARPA right. or whatever. Right. And um, and there was that summary on that back page of the capital plan that showed you what the suggestion was for where some of those monies would come from. This actually doesn't reflect the cut um, that they just voted to stem for, does it? It does not not reflect that. It also doesn't reflect the change that you want to make in the select board staff salaries. Okay. And so if the budget is less than the revenue, I'm yeah. Um, where <laughs> what happens to that difference? That we it, we just leave more free cash on the yeah. table. Okay. Or we could what? decide to increase the snow and ice or something. Yeah. Else. Right. Yeah, right. The same amount of free cash. Mm -hmm. okay. what, what did the select board recommend? 
120 for 120. the for the 120. Yeah. Did we actually voted 120 for the for the reserve fund? fund? I I'm just uncomfortable that you know, given the fact that we have so many unknowns all the time. I mean, our budgets are right. cut so to the bone that if this is like one storm or one legal issue and, and then our, our line item is um, blown and we don't have any ability until May to move money around, you know, contract the services sometimes, um, you know, stuff like that. Unless we do something at a special time. Right. right. And like, yes, unless we have a special town meeting. But I, I, cost. I'm not saying it should be excessively funded because, you know, again, it's a pot of money that's hanging around that, you know, we don't want to be excessive. But I just feel like sometimes it's, you know, we're, we're, we're just shaving too close in some way. Mm -hmm. So if we get it wrong this year, like if we overestimate, wouldn't we just, simply keep that money in there and then potentially just transfer less in like 80,000 the next year or something. Well, what happens if, if yeah. 120 was too, it just goes to, free oh, it goes to free cash. It doesn't stay in there. No, it does every year. Oh, that's even, even better then. Okay. Yeah, every All right. year it's just reappropriated. I'm, I, we had always voted 75 and then, you know, I wanted to go up to a hundred and it just, we've had once in a while over the few years that, it, you know, we're definitely getting closer to 100. So now I feel what would be more comfortable with going up to 120. We haven't voted that yet. And we'll... You you did vote the select board staff salaries at the reduced planner position. Um, but Casey and I had a discussion today about, about one of the salaries in that line in that budget also. But I understand you were you were discussing the higher amount for the planner I yet. We, were, we wanted to see where we are coming out, and we didn't actually want to reduce it to thirty hours until because we felt it was going to limit oh. our the pool, yeah. the applicant yeah. pool by going by yeah. just saying thirty hours. We wanted to see what our overall budget was yeah. before we cut down to thirty hours. Right. So what do we have left to do? But, we haven't done town clerk salaries yet. And the reps, reserve fund, are you? Uh, reserve uh, fund. No, I'm okay. I'm happy with 120. We just right. need a motion. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Is it just, I don't know, if we go up to 120, does it get the whole budget then? Because we're 28,000. Yeah. Yeah. We only have 28,000. Well, like, except right? that. We to, no, but we not. Do we not? That? You have not 20 off of 10. Yeah. 10. 10 off of scams. Oh, yeah. Sorry. It, it was totally Yep. No, right. not yet. Oh. No, so but that's room done. for it. Do you guys want to wait and talk about the other things first and then do reserve fund? We'll yeah. be done talking about all the okay. other stuff. Yeah, that that's fine prudent. with me too. Okay. Let's do um, town clerk salaries 161, 50, 110. Yeah. Uh, we voted that. Open grade right? to <laughs> the town clerk expense that 161 61 Oh, I did that. I am looking for that. Because I think we got an option. Are we reviewing the March 23rd? Oh, no, I have lots of You're, um, I, I don't think I have a date on mine. Either. One, no, one, that's one, that's one, town clerk expense. So, so the town clerk salaries, I had accidentally put two budget sheets in your books. Um, oh. For those that were here at the meeting that time, we ripped out the one that didn't belong there, but it's 101,880. Yeah, we voted that. You we did vote it. Okay. Yeah. We voted it, but it didn't pass. It didn't pass. Oh, yeah. Right. So you weren't here, I don't think. They were talking about. So, so the, you did, apparently, yeah. Um, so this is a new position, David. This is this is you know it used to be that one person did the treasurer, collector, and the town clerk duties, and with with all of the election laws, with with all of the 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 requirements, um, with the public record requests that we're getting, um, and and I and I 
I believe from having Carlene here uh, and working and helping us that we've determined that there were a lot of things that maybe we should have been doing that we weren't doing to like tracking dog licenses and things like that, that, that just, just had been falling to the wayside because there was too much on everybody's plate. So we now have a town clerk position and now we're, we're moving the assistant town clerk out of the treasurer collector town clerk salary budget and into a separate budget for just town clerk. So that's that's kind of the the history of that. How many hours you give a town clerk, how many hours you give an assistant town clerk, I think that's that's kind of up in the air, but we did the best we could to estimate what we think was reasonable. Let's put it that way. And and am I supposed to do the math then? So some some part-time and some more full time. So so right now we did hire an assistant town clerk who started January 23rd, and she was hired at a full-time position, so at 40 hours a week. Um the town clerk is the one that we haven't actually put an ad out in the paper for. We're we're working on that. Um, what's budgeted in here is 25 hours a week. So that being a benefited position, it might be more attractive to somebody, but maybe there'd be somebody out there that would want to do it part-time because they have another town and they would, I, I don't know. I really don't know. Is there a need for a full-time clerk and a full-time assistant clerk? I would say no. No. Right. But that's just my perception. I, I know I don't know enough about the position to to really address it well, but just from my observations. Right. It is not unusual. Whereas the assistant does a lot more things and can help in other areas. But but the town clerk would fill in for like when the assistant is on vacation. Well, and they would they would handle the more department head kind of things that you know the the decision making person the the one who who um spearheads the election process the one you know right. and the assistant would still you know do the dog licenses and do the marriage certificates and the business certificates and you know things like that the census and um so this town clerk line for the 50,000 um, how many hours a week is that? That's that's twenty five hours that a week. That is twenty five hours. Yep. Yes. Should be noted in this discussion that thirty two thousand, the treasure collector salaries are down thirty two thousand because. How do we change positions there too? Well, we just moved moved the assistant town clerk out of that budget because we're now separating those those departments. It was allowed to be separated. You had to go through the legislature. So it's not actually a decrease. They just moved 30, whatever. We're looking at the overall effect. Mm -hmm. Oh, we need to keep that in mind. Right. Right. So that one went down 30 and this one went up 67, right? Right. Is that what right. We're right. So the, the exactly. net is 30. That's 35. 35. Yeah. Yep. We have a motion. Um, well, can I ask another? Oh, well, you can make a motion and then we can mm -hmm. discuss why. Sorry. Um, I think I have a oh. proper question just um, in terms of managing the town. Is, is this, uh, and, and of course, this is a workflow that we don't, we're trying to predict and it's unknown, really, right? Because it's a new thing. So, who got together and made this? Proposal. Is it the selectmen? Is it Casey? Casey, Brenda, Casey, Brenda, Casey, Sarah, Casey and I, Sarah, Sarah huge, yeah, putting your head together. Trevor, that, you know, just 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 trying to figure right. out what might work but best. Well, a lot of meetings too to talk about the new requirements under the election law. Yeah. This is actually usually we have right, right, because you have to have sign ups and there's early yeah. voting and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Right. So I guess my point is this: that there's a lot of thought has gone into how to yes. How to do this, right? And at the same time, we're all flying blind somewhat because it's a new thing. So yeah, we're know a lot more about workflow and how it's right. Here, mm -hmm. 
It also depends on the, how experienced the person is that we can get. Well, yeah. yeah. No, I know. Yep. I don't want to ask about part time clerks again. My client, she has clerks and people in that. Okay, sorry. I thought that was I need a motion. I I think Casey and Chris were working on that and I think you have it pretty well complete right Casey yes there's some we need to so these ads are very expensive and we're trying to pare down some of the language and really reference the job description but this is a very um structured position that's that's um really guided by the statute so we need to be careful of how we frame it and it's fair to say that the person can't be hired until um july 1st no they could be hired they could be hired right now because we do have a budget for yeah. it we do have it in the budget yeah yeah, yeah. Just the funds yeah it's it's uh a portion of the thirty four thousand that's left in that budget yeah, yeah. Beth, you had a question um okay i was trying to remember i mean i remember being at this meeting but i was trying to remember like it didn't pass and like so like why why at that moment why didn't it pass i, I don't know the i i abstained because okay. at that point i was worried about where we're going with personnel and i'm still very worried about where we're going with personnel i think like this is the wrong thing to stake my my <laughs> my position on because I actually I mean the town clerk job is very complicated and I yeah. totally understand. I mean we've already voted to split them. It's already gone to the legislature and come back. So I mean the, the, we're we're gonna do this right. Mm -hmm. But if I sit here and look at it, just since I've been on finance committee, which hasn't been all that long, four or five years or something, right? We have a town administrator. We used to have a, I, I forget what the position was called, but we upgraded it to assistant town administrator instead of executive, executive assistant. Executive assistant, right? The we've added the board of health person. We now have an assistant board of health person. Um, we took the building inspector used to do that board of health job and doesn't do it anymore. We took the building sister, the clerk or whatever that position is and made that full time. It used to be part time. We've taken this job and we've split it and we've made that a full time. We're adding people in the library. We're adding the, rec department. Uh, the planner. Yeah, we want to add hours in the rec department, the highway department. We added a clerk. Um, we took the nurse that used to be a shared nurse and we hired our own nurse. So we're not doing that anymore. The police cost is way up and I'm despite having very clear discussions on it, I'm still a little unclear about how much overtime there is and who's doing, you know, there's sort of this threat of the part-time people going away and I guess they're slowly trading away, but right. um, it's not, you know, it wasn't this sudden thing. So like every time you turn around, we're adding people and adding people and adding people. And all of these people, just like I said about the library, all of these people are motivated and interested and want to do a good job and say, well, if I had more time and I had more resources and you, you can't argue against the um, benefit that they bring to the town. If you take the, the board of health is my, my one that I keep sticking on, like, right. So, I mean, Alex is great and he's very motivated and he wants to do all these great things. And we have these flu clinics and these drive through stuff and we have all this and we have this nurse that gives us more services. All of that is great, but we have to pay for all of that. And I can go to Walmart and get my COVID shot and or or big Y and get my flu shot or whatever, right? And, and but so there's all of this stuff that feels good but is expensive. And I'm just, I'll get off my soapbox. No, now. no, so, no, 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 no,
understand them. totally, but a lot of this stuff, like the town clerk, I mean, there's new election laws. That so the town clerk one, that's why I said, like, this is not uh, the one right. to stake my thing but on, because the, the town happens. clerk one, we got to do. Well, and the, I know that for the same money, I have 12 hours of nursing time, public health nursing, instead of eight. Yeah, so, as far as that yeah. goes, it is pretty equal. Casey, okay. Casey had her Go hand ahead. up. I too, agree I with know. you. Uh, on a lot of this stuff. And I think part of, and I, I've been here a little, just a little longer, but um, I've seen the same thing. And, and I've driven a lot of that. I think I'll take the responsibility for that because as I'm here and I watch how the town works, um, we were woefully understaffing for a long time. And I, and I, and that's a, I guess it's an argument that people could have on both sides, but from where I sit, and I see the burnout that happens. Um, and some of it's driven by this board, right? Like, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, and all this stuff is happening, and we're going to do that, you know, some of that can get cut out, like it, but there are core things like that department and that department, and I point like accounting, treasurer, and that stuff, and the and the select board. Um, which is part Board of Health, too. I think agree with you a little bit on some of the Board of Health stuff as well. But um, I do think as a town for 20 years, I feel like we have kind of ridden, like kept rates low, like didn't really do much. So I think we were, as the world was passing us by, like with all this stuff coming, we kind of still like kept down low. But But I think there was some justification for it really supporting the town with staff because it's like the most important thing but um but i do agree there are certain areas where we should go like is this really but when we get to them you're like well no i can make it i can make an excuse for that like the planner like that's one of the things that this town should really have and i think in 10 years we'll look back and say God, we, how did we survive without it and it's worth the money and that's why i kind of feel like we take this year to explain to the people about a, a a two and a half override, a true one, not a debt exclusion project capital thing that we're doing, but like structure of government has changed over the last 10 years. We have added all these people to kind of support the town. Do you all support what we've done? And will you pay for that with an adjustment to this so we can roll skims in and do these kind of things that really are bringing our town into the next 20 years as we kind of keep rolling forward but it is a lot philosophical discussion on like really what do you what what are the structures of a town and how should we fund it but i think these core staff are like have been way underfunded and like pulling their hair out so. well and i and i and i there's a couple of things you know um first of all the the assistant in this inspections department has always been full-time oh, okay um and we've we've always had the the um assistant board of health inspectors Okay. But I think our workload has substantially changed. And part of that is because we're finally addressing these infrastructure things that are that, yes. that we've been putting off for 50 years. Mm -hmm. And so every project you take on adds uh, a great deal of work to that office, especially, yes. but my office and Sarah's office and 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 others. So I think that needs to be taken into consideration. I I, you know, I get what you're saying mm -hmm. too, but I do believe it. Yeah, there are areas that maybe we need to cut back. <laughs> Boy, I can't hear you. You're not speaking into the mic. Julie, Julie and I share a street in town, so I was just mentioning that you can't get our potholes fixed at Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> the board Have of health isn't going to be on <laughs> Yeah. Go ahead, Jim. And that's oh. a sort of subject for John. We <laughs> on stage road. Perhaps at some point recommend a hiring moratorium for some length of time. I think did Casey, I know at one point in time oh. you had your hand up. Did you want to say something? I do. I worked for the town intermittently for 20 years, Jim. And we operated in the select board office seven departments administrative support at one point. And that's a lot of work because I did it. And we restructured to, to change my position, reorganize support, administrative support staff to better deploy our personnel in 2010. And that's how 
my position grew to executive assistant because somebody needed to oversee two other people to get the work of seven departments done. We were supporting committees. We were supporting all the work for DPW. We're supporting, we were supporting all the select board work. At that point, until 2020, really, when I walked back through the door, we didn't add admin staff. And we added it for DPW because it's really five departments existing under one umbrella. And we didn't have staff capacity to continue doing that sort of select board support. Because like Brenda and Trevor said, we've increased our projects because for 50 years we didn't do anything. And that was, it was a containment exercise to lower costs. So our town staff didn't grow with the, with some of the growth that we saw in statutory requirements in tasks to actually complete work that not just the select board, but the planning board, the zoning board, the conservation commission, and some of our new committees need us to do. So in defense of all of our are the work that we do here, um, we have not grown at the rate that some of our other sister towns have grown. Well, I'm, so I'm not, this I'm not... actual, these changes that you're seeing are to refine the position so we can be more efficient. Right. Yes, I understand this that, consideration that... about growth, but keep in mind, our staffing didn't change for over 20 years. Right, but our population isn't our yes, but our population is flat. You know, the town hasn't grown much in that time either. And we're our town government is growing. We're not making any new taxpayers, you know. <laughs> That's so, a function of other things, Jim. So as long as we preserve land and don't have places for people to build, we don't get growth in our real estate. Right. And we our real are functional growth. growth opportunity is economic development for commercial retail and other yes, types and, of businesses. We're also getting on this treadmill of the state increases the requirements for uh, our workload, mm -hmm. which we then have to apply to the state for money to pay for. And they don't. Yeah, yeah. No, we call that the unfunded job program mandate. for state legislators. <laughs> one, one of the things is that it's as most of you know, we have multiple meetings all week long. I'm out three or four nights a week, but so we're now we have staff people out three or four yeah. nights a week with these hybrid meetings. You can't, I mean, this is brand new in the last two years and it looks like we're gonna go forward at least for two more years. And it's a layer of work you're asking, asking staff to do after regular hours. That's a big deal. We've had staff members leave because of that. So, and that's not an experience that the committees see. It's an experience that administrative staff have to manage. It's not easy either. Um, and we have a continual increase in the number of meetings, which means we have to deploy at least four people at any given time um, to handle. Right now, it's very, it's excessive. I mean, we had how many meetings Five yesterday, Chris? Night. Five last night. We Five had meetings last night. And we, we I was all hands on deck. So to the point of how it brings people into our meetings, I think that's very useful as an administrator. But to your point about what we're doing with staff, it's really changed our deployment and operations model. So the reason a planner is a really key thing, we've never really had one. And in order for us to build resources and capacity in our tax base, we need somebody to help us with that. These individuals used to write, are the ones that wrote grants. Kim writes grants, I've written grants, you know, and- And managing them I takes time. Yeah. Manage them and they, and, but they're getting so complicated that- I would also hope that the planner would put some discipline in that process and some rationale into, even though this grant is there, we're not going to apply for it because the effort is more than we can sustain with the people we have yes. available. Yes. And we, also we just to do that now, we, uh, um, part of the process when we evaluate um, grants is how, how much time does it take to administer the grant? Good. Yeah. Yeah. Not working hopefully, well. Hopefully that, ahead, person, hopefully that person will be able to herd the cats. That's what I was just going to say. So you really need to examine the resources that you have, like you just said, both of you. But 
there has to be some pushback with the committees that want to pursue things if it's not going to have the return on that investment doesn't really meet the, the amount of money you're going to get. Yeah. And if they're putting more work on to the staff yeah. that's here. So my yes. commentary on the staff that's here is in no way denigrating anybody that's here. Yeah. Right. Everybody I, I know works really hard yeah. and is responsive <laughs> and wonderful. Um, but it's all of us volunteers putting more work onto the people that are yeah. here. Like I did it yeah. to you with the financial indicators. And right. next year, I'm going to step back from that and use the ones that DLS gives us, regardless of whether I think they're as good as what we have or not, because it's, it's going to be less work. Okay. It's less work. I, the I thought, staff we, had, I thought we had a pretty good system down there. Okay. Well, I'll talk to you about it first. But yeah. but yeah. I mean, if there's something that can be done there. So I'm I'm guilty of it too, but... To your point, Julie, if you don't mind, um, my experience with capital is that support from me, from Mark and the rest of the committee, just being able to do some of that work. And I, it's not like it's not something that gets added to the plate. It is. But that support really facilitates getting this done. So, you know, there's this balancing act of where do we deploy our resources in terms of capacity amongst our people? But if they're really the return on that investment is to get through the process the way that we did this year, we were fine sort of how we had approached it last year and really we got further along quicker, in my estimation, just observing as a town administrator, but without that background support that you just mentioned, I don't think we would have gotten there as quickly. We do have a good volunteer team right now. Like excellent. yes, and we appreciate that. Excellent. All of that. We're not in in my mind. We're not like I'm not criticizing the committees about yeah. that. I'm just saying there's a, we've added committees. It adds a level of work. I feel like we're in a good spot. I mean, there's some towns that are like kind of you know, arguing with each other and all that. So we feel pretty okay. good. So moving on. So we we have a motion on the table for. Town clerk salaries at one hundred one thousand eight eighty. So let's let's get let's get back to town clerk salaries. For a bit. Um, anybody want to talk about it anymore? Any other further discussion? Let's okay. hope. All right. Um, so it's been. Is, is there, go ahead. Is there any way we can take the people? And I'm kind of lost of who's doing what now. It's grown so quickly. Um, is there anybody that works on that side of the building that could help with the people in this side of the building? Oh, so, we do a lot. so we didn't have to hire somebody? No. No. You need a town clerk, John. It's not, <laughs> it's not an option. You have to have one. There are what we did, understand, no, John, that when we town reviewed this, could we be. actually cut the hours back because we weren't sure what it was going to need in terms of the actual town clerk stuff as as opposed to the assistant town clerk stuff. And Alex has been like filling in here and like we, the, we've that, had that, Alex. That we actually we've have deployed it. staff in other departments to help people in the last year. As we've been. Yeah. I'd like to make a motion to call the motion. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a second? Second. All right, we are now voting whether we're gonna call the motion or not, which means we can't talk about it anymore. We're just gonna do it. So everybody in favor of calling the motion. All right, that's unanimous. So we have a motion, town clerk salaries for 101,880. All those in favor? Four, five. Five, zero, one, and that passes. All right. Okay. Um, so the, the very next budget um, was the town clerk expense. Um, after this got voted, I went back and took a better look at it and felt like there was some money that could come out of this budget. It felt like it was too inflated for the type of year mm -hmm. we were looking at. So I did reduce that budget by $2,725. So I was hoping we could revote that budget. Do we have a motion? Make a motion to- We vote. didn't yet. We want to vote. Oh, wait, where's, so do we have the new number? Oh, yeah. It's 22,850. Right. Yep. Okay. Sorry, you needed to pull that out of the budget. I'd like to make a motion to recommend town clerk town clerk expense account number 161-5410 in the amount of $22,850. Second. Any discussion? Why did elections drop $2,000? Why did elections drop $2,000 in the original? It's a heavy year. It's, it's, it's not a major election year, so... 
um, all we're going to have is an is an annual election in fiscal 24. So I still think the 11,000 is too high, but I took it down $2,000 uh, from what Carlene had had put in. Yeah. Have a special. 25, John, with the presidential election. Got it. <clears throat> Any other questions or discussion? All those in favor? That's unanimous. Six zero zero. You vote that too. Yeah, I'll make a motion for twenty two thousand eight hundred and fifty for um, uh, expense town clerk expense. I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Hi, Carol. Hi, uh, Trevor McDaniel. Oh, it's already in here. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Dang. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we we what didn't vote it last week. I should have I should have had you do it last week, but we didn't do the Franklin Tech one. Yeah, can we do that, that real quick? That was under, yeah, School. Franklin Tech. Education. The assessment? Oh, we voted the assessment. Did we? Yes. Um, it was something. Oh, we didn't vote the capital. So the capital is seven. Uh, make a motion to approve Franklin Tech capital at 17827 um, I'll second that. I'm Any here. further discussion? No. All those in favor? I, Carolyn. I, Trevor McKinnon. Are you sure we did the oh, Franklin 122? I don't. Yeah, we did the assessment because I've got it down 323. We vote. Remember, I went through and like, well, what? Do what she must have not written that back. Because I, I, what date was that? The 23rd. Because I was. Yeah. I, I guess I didn't know. It, you know, we brought it down to 31. I see. Um, Sorry. <laughs> I don't think it's in here. Brenda, are there any ones? Yeah. Are there any people vote? I don't know because I was not part of your meetings to, to know what you voted mm -hmm. and what you didn't. Um, One, I did two, look at two. Trevor's book the other day. So Casey and I were kind of looking at it, but I was, I didn't write down which ones you did or didn't we vote. We went through so. the, that night, and I went through every budget. The only ones that We're we didn't two, vote were the school stuff, Okay, I think. I'll go through it one more time and just make sure. Okay, I, just, I guess I missed the part of that. I don't think we approved. You didn't have your book that night. Oh, that's Remember? Okay. Yep, okay. we looked on on mine. Yep. Okay. All right. Maybe that's why I didn't write it down. I yes. Didn't, I didn't it might have been like it yep. day you had to leave. Right? I, I was just asking. Okay. Um, yeah, I heard it. So the only other, so the, I think the last things are the reserve fund and whether we want to do any snow and ice. What we voted. And and is it just a line item on that? It's no, it's it's, no, it's, it's a budget. It's sheet. on page. It's in tab twelve. It's it's Friend, in the special we can, we can wait another couple of weeks for the snow and ice, right? You think? We probably could till we know more what we're doing. And and if you wanted to reconsider that select board staff salaries, um, and Julie, I I don't know what what else you wanted to wanted to focus on. Yeah, I don't have a sheet for that. Um, find a sheet for that. Is it one up there? No, no, no it was. Okay. It, it was it, it, you, it, you don't have it in mm -hmm. tab 12? No. Did you accidentally put it in tab 1? I think it's not. Uh, I have not. 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 I would have put it in tab 12. Okay, so let's let's focus and stop the business. Um, we have a, what's that thing? The class comp, class comp plan. plan. Can you tell us what changed on that? And then... Class comp? Casey, do you want to talk about what changed on that? Absolutely. Which okay. So there was a change that was made to the outreach coordinator duties. And the BOO, the select board, and the personnel board approved that change. It changes the placement of that position from a grade B to a grade C. And it has to be incorporated into the class comp. Um, so that change was made. And understand that personnel boards looked at this twice. Um, the other change that the personnel board uh, approved last night, because if we hire a planner, the planner has to be placed in the comp plan. So we placed the planner in the comp plan, the planning economic development coordinator is what we've called it. We placed that position in the comp plan at the spot that we think it needs that 
I recommended that it needs to be because there's some technical oversight and knowledge that needs to happen. Um, and it's supervising processes. So there's that element in there. Um, we also removed the town accountant from grade G because that's being handled as a contracted position. And we can expect that to happen as we move ahead. Um, once a certain town accountant decides she's going to retire. Um, it's, it's actually fairly routine for accountants to have separate contracts. And so that was the reason. Um, the three positions that are now out of the class comp are the town administrator, the police chief, and the town accountant. Because under the statute 108N, we, those are the positions that towns are allowed to contract separately for. So those were the three changes made. The numbers did not change. Yeah. Okay. We generally, the, um, so the, the changes you just said, the outreach coordinator position that's in the budget that we voted is already at this level. Sorry. Yes. Uh, oh, okay. It's already been presented. Jennifer presented those changes in her budget. But, but he didn't increase his pay starting with the full-time hours. I think that's starting July 1st, right? No, I, I can't that's remember. that's increased. That was approved by the BOO, the personnel board, and the select oh, board. Okay. Yeah. I right. can't remember. So the she budget has the money in the next budget. year has this increase in it. Yes. Okay. And then the planning economic development that coordinator we voted is at this level also. Right. Casey, the planner is at that position. I it, believe so. It, we talked about that. It, if we haven't, because mm -hmm. I remember well, we talked it, about it, Brenda. It, what do, you, what do you have the planner listed as on the comp plan? I don't have F. one in front of me. No. The comp F. plan's in F, and this sheet says E. Yeah, so it's actually in F. Okay, so the which planner... Which is the same level as Chris's position for different reasons. Oh, okay. So we're going to have so to correct it. So that's changed on this budget. Will that, so that change what we voted? 35, 20. Because the hourly rates. Five yeah, five. is that yeah, is that going to change one twenty two five ten the select board staff salary? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The other thing that's going to change, uh, or might change, is um, the step that Pat is at. As far as the planner goes, we reduced that budget by. We did. Yeah, but by hours, not by. No, but we just like. Pick the gross number to reduce it. Didn't we? Well, we no. we reduced that number. we reduced the planner position to thirty hours in that voted um, amount. We reduced overtime and we reduced the part time assistant down to fifteen hours. The select board did not. Yeah, select, select did board not does not approve that, that. Which is you didn't do that on purpose because you wanted to reconsider. Mm -hmm. yes. So then we need to increase the budget for the rate. Yes. Right. Yeah. So if we increase this to 35, 20 million, I've lost my phone. Oh, it's five dollars an hour for a few thousand hours. So okay. Is that a 30 hour a week? Is that what we ordered? That's what we voted, yeah. That's what we voted against which is fifteen hundred pounds. We 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 haven't reduced it from forty just because we wanted to make sure. Potentially. I know I've mentioned it before, but I'm willing to reduce my assistant, cut that person in half or even eliminate that person completely if if that's what it takes to be able to vote a better budget for the staff of the select board. Brenda, the problem is we don't want you to burn out. We're not talking about well, I'm already burned out. I know. <laughs> Sorry. Exactly. We're, we're, the they, ship has sailed. Saying the burnout is faster rate than you already are. Well, I I did say I, at one of the last meetings that it is possible 
that that assistant town clerk will have some extra time once we have a clerk. you know not during census time or not during dog license time but might have extra time to help me and maybe eliminate my need for that assistant i don't know i, I don't know but when i'm get, willing to try clerk, then we can work that out and that would be a part of the discussion for next year i don't i don't want to plan for extra hours when we don't even have a person plan for who well it's when? It's March. We should have a town clerk by July. I hope we better. <laughs> we absolutely will. We better. Yeah, we, we have to. Um, I got a lot. Right now, we're using, we're trouble using for Wendy, that. So Wendy we... Hool from Sunderland to help us. Um, yeah. I don't. I don't. So, I don't write off well, like even that. even if if you were to cut my person in half, that would still be five hours a week, which. Really, I'm going to need them mostly every two weeks. So that would be 10 hours every two weeks. That'd be better than what I have right now. If I cut that person in half, that would be $7,000 you could find to spend on somebody Wait. in the select board staff. So let's look at select board staff salaries position. Um, can I ask a question about it? Because um, I wasn't here for the whole planning, the planning discussion. But um, to go in favor of a town planner, but my question is, how like what kind of authority does this person have to say no? Well, who will listen to them? Like, because that's the whole point, right? Like that we don't overextend, that we make good decisions, but like they're worth it if you know all of our committees are like, yeah, we shouldn't do that right now, which isn't typically an attitude. That our committees have <laughs> <laughs> committees are strong more. yeah so <laughs> like would this planner have like i mean wouldn't probably wouldn't have authority would be just making recommendations to the town right would, are people going to listen we listen you want to speak into the mic david yeah i thought the purpose of the planner was to be essentially a grant writer mm. But it, well, an administrator, yeah, administrator. economic yeah. development coordinator, as well as planner, as well as grant writer, I would think they're going to be everything. Yeah. They're going to be the panacea we've all been waiting for, right? And no, they won't be. But we have but to question. Do, sure we need to speak into have the mic when you're talking. And I, yeah. I will drive that for sure because we just cannot keep doing more stuff just because it's shiny and new. We got to focus on our core needs paying our bills, paving our roads, and supporting our staff to get us a place to operate. It's Go ahead, Casey. But to Beth's point, it's been very difficult to keep those things prioritized. That's one of the reasons that this position could be helpful. Mm -hmm. To Beth's point though, how do you push back with committees when you're an administrative staff person and those committees have more authority than you and there are times that it's difficult to get that argument across. So it's a well, it's a thoughtful question and comment, Beth. We need to, we collectively need to do that. So the I don't know how you put it in the budget description. Our our summary sheet is low in that select board staff salary dollar value, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's correct. And I think we voted 317,956, but the select board didn't. They voted something else. I we think voted you, the 40 I think hour. 339,584. Okay. We didn't want to cut it until we were at the tail end of the budget, if there was no other choice. It's town meeting floor. <laughs> I don't want so, to get up. Trouble is you can't raise it on I know. Um isn't the person gonna come in? We hire the person, they're gonna come in, they're gonna work 40 hours a week, catching up, setting up their office, applying for grants, doing some planning, but then after six months, when all the catch up is done, are they gonna need 40 hours a week? I think to keep things going and to do the grant management. 
So assuming you pull the fish into the boat, you still have a lot of administrative work to do, right? Yes. That's so, where yes. a lot of it yes. is. Yes. The planning pieces of this are technical assistance to the planning board, zoning board, potentially CONCOM if necessary, but those permitting activities for those three boards connect to the inspections work, so other types of permitting. Um, grant writing elements that impact planning and economic development um, activities, not just for the town, but in support of other ways to build our tax base, that those are things that are ongoing. It isn't just write three grants and, and get money. It's write three grants, administer those grants, help the planning board with their decision making process, help the zoning board with their decision making process. It, it, it it's actually full time work. The, right um, now we're cobbling it together. The uh, Board of Health two grants that um, I participate in are required seven meetings a month. That's about 14 hours a month just to participate with those grants to keep right. our health board of health budget down. Um, and it's state requirements, you know, we're I'm definitely open to hiring a, a planner at part time if they feel like, you know, because I don't know what's out there in the market. Can we get somebody that would just do part time and say, look, I'm just going to come in a short amount of time and like we get the ball rolling, but I just, I, I would love to have the funds because I don't know if it's more advantageous for a part-time or a, a full-time. I don't know what the, you know, do we have to pay more uh, for better quality person at part-time or pay less for less quality full-time? I don't, I just don't know what the market is really for that. What's on the table right now? Are we are we looking at the reopening select board staff salary? But yeah. Okay. So, um, so does it okay. seem like did you the new cost like so if it's at forty hours and thirty five dollars an hour, what are we looking at? Thirty thirty dollars an hour. An extra is three essentially it's essentially ten thousand more. So it's something three forty nine. We have to refer it anyway. So we have it at thirty, right? Yeah, we have a thirty uh, thirty dollars an hour. Yeah, but we just saw that on the. That's what we just oh, discovered. Oh, got you. That, yeah. that, that changed. That you moved it from E to F. So I think it's thirty five twenty one instead of thirty six two. Yeah, so it's seventy three thousand five hundred eighteen forty eight is the total that should be on that line item. What was it again? Seventy three five eighteen. At how many hours? That's forty, 40 hours, hours a week. Twenty eighty eight. So I believe the rationale we had for scaling it back was simply that since we don't know how much this job is going to require, why start with a full 40-hour position instead of sort of incrementally working our way up? Yeah, that's it. We don't know. Yeah. So whether somebody will take the job at 30 hours or 40 hours. We've got... UMass just down the road. There's any number of unemployable public policy majors. Yeah, they might not be any good though. <laughs> unemployable is not. <laughs> yeah. Um, may I make a motion? Yes. Um, yes. May I make a motion to recommend select board staff salaries account number 122-5110 at $351,193, which would staff the planner at 40 hours a week. What's your son again? Wait, uh, I think that's 350. I, actually, I went to public school, so you might want to check my math, but I have 351,000. <laughs> and what I did was I took out the 61,000. Oh, actually, I, I may have taken out the wrong one. I, I, I took out the planner, I thought, at 63,935 and then put it back in for 73. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it seems yeah. Well, it I should think, be 349, 167. Yeah, let me do that one more time. Let's see. Our motion's in holding. Yeah. Nobody second that one. Make another <laughs> motion. <laughs> Marilyn, we have to do select, uh, we have to do Frontier Capital and motion. Board of Health. Okay. Okay, so just kidding. 349,167. I amend my motion to that number, which I think is. Right. 
167. Yeah, 349, 167. Okay. And it's in the budget at 317. So where can we get that extra? That's 32,000. That's what was voted. Yeah, we do have a little extra still. No. Um, but we haven't so the, right now the revenue the, the 349,167. I have 348. Oh, I missed the 300. Never mind. I got it. Sorry. So that is addition of 31,2.12 over what we voted. But then we have a $10,000 reduction to skims if that gets voted. And what was yeah. the delta here like between? We Our had, revenue. I have 27,958, I believe. So then adding the 10 makes it. So if we don't increase reserve fund, we'll be fine right under. Right. So, so that should be the 38,000. Right. Or 37,000. Yeah, 37, 38,000. So if we only do 100, yeah, I don't remember where I put my note. We're just. Still don't have a nickel for the well, they found other sources for capital. Provided we get the tennis courts. That's that would be the only thing that. But that's yeah. happening tomorrow, right? Yeah. Yeah. So couldn't we possibly just? Oh, yeah. Twenty-seven thousand nine sixty-eight. Thirty-eight. Thirty-seven thousand nine sixty-eight is what we have there. Uh, the CPC. Uh, I think we. Yeah, have we have meeting. a meeting next week and the week after and the week after yet. Because we haven't looked at any of the Warren articles yet. We got to review all those Warren articles. Casey, do we have enough money out of the Capital Stabilization Fund to cover the um, tennis courts if CPC doesn't do it? Yes. We could. It's really hard by the end. What'd you say? We could. Capital Stabilization could probably fund the, the tennis courts. Yeah. Well, CBA. No, there's a just a finite amount of cash. Hmm? I don't know. I thought there was something about you mean the CPA? Deadline. It was just that we applied a couple of days late. It's no, it's it's their process of how they kind of want to get it done in time. And it's true that we, you know, we put everything <laughs> fine. But yeah. <laughs> Casey, yeah, so you're not muted. You're not muted. No, <laughs> now you are. <laughs> we didn't hear what you said, but no, we just heard it. A... My messages aren't sending. Sorry, I try to mute myself for that reason. I just heard something muttered. A start <laughs> yeah. whisper. Okay. Um, let's whatever. Let's just vote this thing. And what what do you select board? But let's have select board decide what they want to do first, and then. Um, I make a motion to um, vote 349,168 uh, or $168.48. Is that the correct amount? No. Well, you're not going to use cents. Knock okay. off the cents. And I had 349,168 too, but Mark had 167. It doesn't it's matter. A, a dollar. I'm not it's supporting the dollar. Yeah. It's enough. Let's do the 68. I can't whatever. take another yeah. dollar. I'm going to my motion to 68. Okay. All right. Okay. So I'll second that motion at three hundred forty nine thousand one hundred sixty eight dollars for the select board staff salaries. Um, that means the planner has to leave someday on for fifteen minutes early. That's right. <laughs> well, you don't want to but we're not going to hire them right no, off the bat, adjust, anyways, right? Just it <laughs> takes forever to or get somebody. Um, <laughs> all those in favor? Nine one sixty eight. Aye. Thank you, Trevor. Aye. <laughs> It was 349, 168. All right. What do we need to do? Would I, anybody I on finance committee like to make a motion for that value? Yeah, I'll amend my my motion to 349,168. A second. Okay. It would be much more convenient if Dave were to second it. That way we don't have to have the same motion twice. Okay. <laughs> Okay. All right. Dave already seconded it. So. Sure, everybody. Um, any discussion on this? Mark, can you change your position on that we should, that 
because we voted before. We, were you not here when we I, voted? I was here. I was the one that was difficult. And um, <laughs> I think that it's probably a waste of time to try and go down to 30 hours. You okay. know, I, I think right. that we're going to end up stuck with someone who is an unemployable UMass student. And why do we, as a finance committee, have to wait for the select board to vote it? The select board proposes a budget to the finance committee. Right. The finance committee recommends the budget to the town. Or doesn't. Okay. So, or doesn't. Or doesn't. Or doesn't. Okay. We agree or disagree. So the select board makes the budget. We agree or disagree. We can change the budget mm -hmm. and recommend okay. something different to the town. Our sure. recommendation is what goes to the town That's right. on the board. They see both numbers typically. But, yeah. Well, um, and Dan unless, usually says no, right. why okay. the difference kind of thing. Unless unless we change the warrant. Enough said. Yeah. Okay. Right. Any discussion on this? Are you guys ready to vote? <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is a this is a big, this is is a big like position. Is. This is it like is. hiring an assistant or a temp or something. This is this one's gonna pay for itself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have discussed like it at length. You guys are made up your minds. <laughs> yep. All right. All those in favor. All those opposed. I I am. Four two zero. It passed four two zero. Thank you very much. See what town meeting. I is. am very, very uncomfortable with this budget because yeah. we are not only spending down our our whatever you call it free, free cash. cash. We're raiding every bucket that we have, and we're spending down our capital. Um, and we are our putting ourselves. We're hiring people, and people increase faster mm -hmm. than two and a half percent per year. So we're putting ourselves into extremists there. So I am very uncomfortable with the whole thing. But I will stop soapboxing. We need to do um, reserve fund. Anybody want to make a motion for reserve fund? I move that we recommend spending $100,000 on reserve fund. Second. We, we should revote it then. I mean, it's not Yeah, hard. exactly. It shouldn't it's be different. Hard. Well, it's, yeah, let's... We okay. could look into other budgets and look at trimming other budgets in order to get the reserve fund up a little bit if we're uncomfortable with the reserve fund. There's a couple that have been mentioned as possibilities. One is the police budget. One is the inspections um, full-time position. Um, I thought I had something else in mind, but I can't think of it. No. School choice. We go back to the schools. So, Drive a van. Yeah. Yeah. I asked for 20000 from the school. All right, we have a motion for, go ahead. Because that would be the last one and we would be done. Yeah, but I feel like we're not we're quite done. done. No, it doesn't feel like. I feel like we want to maybe have a broader discussion. Yeah, when we're not All right. so tired. We yeah. will save the reserve fund for another sure. night. Would anybody like to sense. withdraw their motion? Whoever made the motion? I'm, I, 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 I withdraw the motion. Yeah. All right. Get a second. Karen? All right. Withdraw a second. All right. A little I think we're done. Okay. I want to, um, to make a motion to uh, approve for the select board the Frontier Regional Capital at. Um, Eleven thousand two hundred ninety dollars. I'll second that. All those in favor? Um, I Carol. I Trevor McDaniel. I make a motion for the finance committee to adjourn. Second. Do you? Um, we have one more uh, board of health. Did we vote that? I've got a yeah. circle on that, but we haven't voted it at eighty-eight thousand three sixty-nine. That number. That's a uh, five one two five one one zero. Oh. May, may I may I interrupt the select board real quick and just make a motion to close the or to uh, to adjourn the capital Absolutely. planning yes. committee? Um, Sorry, please. I second that, Mark. All those in favor? Aye. All right. <laughs> yeah, the, Thank you again for doing some yeah, job. Yeah, doing a great job. I, I,
I'm okay with I have that. to say I'm not shocked that you're done on time and it was smoothly this done, but okay. Oh, Casey's got her hand, hand up. Yeah, try. Oh, try. you can just talk. So before the finance committee leaves, I need to tell you we found a problem with one of the meetings. Right. April 17th is Patriots Day. Yeah. It's a holiday. Um, I would respectfully request that you guys consider making that change since most of you are in the room. Um, because we really shouldn't be holding a meeting on a holiday. No, Casey, we should, Casey is it um the 350th one? The town meeting is on our normal um, day for the 350th, so we were going to move the 350th to the 17th. Is Same it... reason. Same reason, no. Okay. It's, what it does is it forces people who normally have a holiday to work. Yeah, I'll just email okay. you. That's not All right. Yeah. I, I will um, I think it's Thursday the 20th. I will try to see if we can change so the Drew, date. Could we shift and so to the, it's a, it's a state holiday, so it doesn't show up on a calendar all the time. I know um, we we recognize that and we're sorry can you just that. check yeah can you just check and see if the 18th is available is the zoom account available on the 18th we can check I'll okay. get back you you guys can head out yeah. I'll work with we're not gonna have it on the 17th I might run a marathon that day I don't know really yeah. no no good for you <laughs> <laughs> so did we do board of health Carolyn it feels like we just don't. Yeah, you you had to have voted it before we we got something written here. Yeah, because you you came and you did that way early on. Oh, and we haven't changed it. I thought we no. held off because we weren't sure about this. <laughs> I have eighty eight thousand three sixty nine. That's what we voted. Okay. We reduced the hours. Do you have a date on that? Do you know? Um. No, I don't. Uh, you want to just vote it? Be done with it. Well, we can vote it again. I'll make a motion to approve the Board of Health uh, payroll at 88369 Okay, I will second that. I know we re we already voted it, but... Just to cover itself. Yeah. Uh, all those in favor? I'm Carolyn. Governor McDaniel, aye. Thank you. Um, we can just reiterate. What, what we did... Well, remember yeah, I remember you would... Yep, yep, I do. I remember that. I just want to make sure that we're good. Um, and I've just got to get a copy of a reserve sheet at some point. I don't have one, but I think everything else I'm done with. Did you read this at all? Um, thanks, everybody. Thank you. Have a good night. Thanks so much. I um edited already to Pat on yesterday. Great. Casey, I, are you going to make I, it? Um, added, I know it's really great. I added like two or three sentences. That's it. And um, did typos. Oh, and I eliminated this. Um, I just eliminated this first sentence. Um, okay. Yeah, because this is right here. Your heading's here. So this past year, because it was redundant. Yeah. No. <laughs> Stop. Get it done. And again. Um, all right. Very we went through all the typos. Yeah, there. and I think. Um, can't see the name at the moment. Who's that? Assistant clerk. Cassie. Cassie. Mm -hmm. I think she she did the work on this, right? The report, and it's all set to go to Pat. I believe so, okay. but I, I just want to make sure Pat no, has Pat, something. To... I will, I Pat once took well, all my. Cassie edited. Okay, then. So I, I, uh, Chris was coordinating with okay. Casey. So if you want to just visit with Casey, she'll. Everyone she'll good with the report for the select board? I just didn't. I just want to make sure Pat got something that we weren't, that we were negligent she did. on the date. But Carolyn gave her some corrections. Right. We actually had Cassie, the new assistant yep. town clerk, start working Cassie's through that. Done. Perfect. So she's been working on it. Yeah. I don't think so, but I. Okay, but Kathy is not like right. Oh, oh, perfect. Yeah. Right. I just wanted to make that By the way, I found out she's done grant writing. She's helped with grant writing. Oh, you I ready? just wanted to make sure. So, yeah. yeah. I thought Pat, I was ready. Pat, I had done you can write that. But I um, wanted to just double check after I did. Okay. Mean that it was 100% time I got sent. I know Pat put it back on yeah. her desk. Oh, okay. Yeah, the whole thing. The whole and I'll be around. I think we need to go to the Yeah. I made the ghost right now. Exactly. Then I would have to think right now. Yeah. 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 We got it. We're working on grammar. Okay. Yeah. We need to adjourn then. So.
Um, no, there was a couple things that we were supposed to do. Really? There was a couple things on the agenda, I thought. There are, but oh. we need, there's a little bit of background we need to finish. There are some questions that came up. So I was respectfully going to ask the board if we can push those three things off. Yeah, to sounds good to me. So it sounds about right. Yeah. yeah. So we Thank can, you. Great. Everybody can go to bed. <laughs> Should be in our pajamas by now. Um, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. What? Oh, just adjourn. We're going to adjourn. Oh, so we're not doing those nope. things. We're going to do them later. Oh, okay. Any, then I, I will. Are, are you said. making the motion? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Uh, I will second that. All those in favor? Gentleman McDaniel, aye. Aye. Thank you, Chris. Thank you.